Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, guys, for the delay. I had a phone call right as I ended that. As always, my luck. That's all, man. What's up? Thanks for everybody joining me tonight. Good to see you guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight, Nikki. I uh, appreciate it. Everybody, welcome my lovely co host, Miss Nikki, tonight. I'm already in my jammies, man. I got a drink. It's a good time. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Uh, tonight, guys, thanks for uh, jumping in and joining us tonight. We are on episode seven of my new series, The True Crime, True Stories Behind Hollywood Movies. Uh, this evening, we are, and this again uh, was Miss Nikki's uh, suggestion for this one. Uh, we are doing the uh, true story behind the uh, movie, The Clovage Killer. Do you have something on in the background? I'm picking up a bad. I do. Bad uh, background. Okay, there we go. Uh, it is the um, true story behind the movie Little Pitch Killer, which is, of course, the BTK killer, uh, guys. Um, so it's not an exact parallel of his life, but it's kind of like. Um, it's loosely, loosely. Uh, kind of like the scary look behind the curtain is yeah. how I feel about it. And again, just like the Gainesville Ripper we did for the movie Scream, um, the uh, there, there's so many that we've, we've looked into. Jack the Ripper is from Hell. All of these movies that we're doing, um, and it's just a proven show that there are two stories, not yet, behind uh, these movies, guys. And it, it's, it's kind of insane how many there are. One second, folks. Hi, Kaden. Do you have earbuds, headphones, anything? Do you have two pairs? Just a pair of puppy dryer. Hold on one second, folks. It's all good. Uh, let's see who we got here with us this evening. Uh, Pink is in the house. Thanks for Pink Peony. Thank you for joining hey, us. Hey, Pink Peony. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Drift. Great to have you. Thank you again, Drift, for joining us this morning. I appreciate having you. Yeah, Drift, did you bring Melissa with you? <laughs> and it was nice to meet your wife as well. That was such a, a nice added uh, extra special pleasure today. So thank you for that. I love that. I got the whole Dover crew here. So I got Dover dad, Dover kid. And Miss Heather's in the house. Uh, thank you. And that's correct, guys. If you could please show a little love, uh, go over there and uh, subscribe to our co host, Miss Nikki's channel. Um, Nikki at the Wandering Orphan. Uh, it's got a great channel, guys. It does the same stuff we do. Um, she just has a prettier face to look at than I do. That's all. So check it out. <laughs> you know, show her some love. She deserves it. She's part of the team here, so show her some love, guys. Well, thank um, you. I appreciate that. My first episode, actually, I just I filmed it yesterday. Only didn't actually film it. It didn't record. <laughs> so I was just an idiot talking to the camera for however long. And uh, then I redid it today, and it actually filmed. So it's uh, in post right now, and it shouldn't take more than, you know. I'm hoping maybe tomorrow morning it should be ready, because I don't want to drop it right after this, because we're running right over to publicly buzzed afterwards. So that's kind of crafting a party. I don't want to do that. So I'll wait till tomorrow morning. Sounds good. And everybody, please, please, if you have the chance, please tune in for that. Uh, it should be a, a interesting scenario. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, why did Ted Bundy let Liz Pepper live? So that's a good question. I'm sure, the whole world would like to actually know that. To be honest with you, um, I have opinions, and that's what it's all about: is seeing what everybody's opinions are, guys. Um, and again, as she just said, once this, uh, we're done with today's night show. Uh, publicly, but going to be live. I believe we said ten thirty tonight. Uh, yeah, ten thirty Eastern. So, yeah, so, for all my fun crew, that's 930. Yep, yeah, yep. And we're going to jump over there, show some love, support him. And it's supposed to be a Friday night show, which is supposed to be kind of insane for what he said. So he wants us there. We're going to be there. Uh, he's been uh, uh, advertising our channel. We've been advertising his channel, lifting each other up. And that's what we got to do, folks, to keep us all rolling. So absolutely. Um, like both family here, extended family with them. 
Sounds great. Sounds great. Just as we have been doing with PPR's channel and all that, we keep each other going, guys. We grow each other, and that's how we all become successful, folks, and that's the way to do it, being honest with you. Uh, well, when you find good people, that's all you can do, right? That's right. That is absolutely right. Thank you for that compliment, Pink. I appreciate that. And yes, Miss Heather, thank you for that as well. There is the link, guys. If you haven't checked them out, uh, Dan and Steve, it's a great channel. It's called Publicly Buzzed. Um, great stuff, guys. Great stuff over there. They have a good time. Um, telling you, you can't you can't go wrong with it. I'm super excited about them. I'm super excited about tonight's show over there too. So do me a favor, show some love. If you love me, you got to show them some love. So go check it out. Folks. Uh, right, and let's see. Very true. Very, very true. Speaking of which, there they are. Welcome, welcome, Public Buzz. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, tonight, I'm sorry. I feel like I should do one of those. <laughs> um, let's see. Who else do we have? K Diffs 18 is in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, absolutely, Public. That's a whole uh, spot. Or, or either one. Both of you, no problem, guys. No problem. <laughs> Uh, K Dips is in the house, as I said. Uh, let's see who else do we have. Drift is in the house, Pink is in now. Transporter, welcome, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight. Uh, Mr. David James, the Aussie, my Aussie best friend. How are you, my brother? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Miss Granny, always a pleasure, my dear. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Dober Dad, Mr. JJ's in the house. This would be Miss Nikki. Awesome, my friend. Uh, thanks for joining us, Dober Dad. We have you, and I'm sure Dober Kid's in here somewhere too. He joins us on a regular day. And then we got the Dober Kid, Dober Puppies. They're in the most of the time. They like to hear about the meatballs, guys. They love the meatballs. So. Oh yeah. Uh, black. Spray. You're killing me, Dago. You are killing me. Is everybody seeing and hearing me? Okay. Can you see everything and hear everything, Nikki? Okay. Oh, yeah. Heather said black I got to get sound, so that must have been something else. No worries. Miss Sherry's in the house. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, let's see. Let's see. A lot of noise in the background, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, my mama's in the house. What's up, mama? Ruth Gosnell. That's my mama. Thanks for joining us tonight, mother. I appreciate you so very much. Hi, Mama Dago. What else do we have? I think that's going to be about do it, guys. So, guys, grab your coffee, your tea, whatever that may be. Grab some popcorn. Come on and sit down. Have a conversation with me and Miss Nikki. Uh, it should be a good show tonight, as I hope it will be. Uh, so get comfortable, folks. Let's see what we can get into. I uh, hope you had a great day, Nikki. How's about to get here. you? Well, I mean, we spent most of it together online, so, yeah. <laughs> That's about it, yeah. Uh, I had to curtail it a little bit early, as always, on Heather, Fridays. We got our standing. Heather meeting. said she's picking up yeah. feedback on your end, hon. Uh, I have none. It is silent here. All right, tell me what you guys hear now. La, 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 la. Sing us a little song, Dago. I don't hear nothing. I think we're good. We'll figure it out if there is more noise. We'll get it. I know my my whole family just came in the back, the front door to the house. Now, so now I hear something. I don't know what the hell that is. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Uh, that would be Slevin throwing in a temper tantrum because it's not on my lap. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> He's there's, an, boy. there's the background noise, folks. <laughs> the puppy is <laughs> right, 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 right. It's back. It, she just said that that's the that's Slevin, her puppy, is not happy because he can't sit in her lap. Uh, yeah, I can hear her now. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I think that's so far. We got 14 people in here as of now. Uh, come on, guys, get comfortable. Come on in. Now. Do you want to put up, make sure you put up the gate first so they don't just send all this and then um, uh, Sherry, put them inside. Sherry, static. I don't hear any static now. 
They were having that problem over at uh, Publicly Buzz last night. Yeah, uh, Dover Dad just went and uh, he's putting the boys in their crates with uh, chewy bones, so we could be good. Oh, no, that must be nice. I don't ever get no chewy bones. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you, Trans. Right? Yep, yep, that's right. That is right. Um, you have a lucky dog. I don't see anybody else coming. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to give it a little bit longer, guys, to get some people in. Um, answer, I'm answer. going to uh, ask you to give me one moment. Go, um, Miss Nikki, if you could keep everybody company for a minute, I will be right back. All right. Did you hear me? Is it gone? Yeah. Okay. I will be right back. Thank you. So, does anybody know where he puts the key to the liquor cabinet? And who wants to get on my shoulders through the cookie jar? Because dad left the room. So, here we go next. Thanks everybody for joining us in tonight. Uh, what? Shameless self promotion. How about that? So, I recorded my first episode today. It is the adjacent, as promised, and it's in post right now. So, hopefully, um, I don't want to do it tonight because we got the show. And then after this, we're going to publicly buzz. Everybody, whole squad, join us, roll out, roll up, and just drop in. It's going to be a party like always. It's such a good room. I love the chat there. I love the group. And then maybe tomorrow, because it's a little downtime. Mine won't be live, but you can check it out at your own leisure, that sort of thing. I'm still new to be gentle, but I do love critique. So that way I know what's good and what's not, that sort of thing. Um, filler, filler, filler. <laughs> he looked me unsupervised with a show. What did he think I was going to do? So we had a good show earlier today. I'm excited about that. That was a really, um, I think it was a really important message that we covered earlier. And honestly, I just want to say I'm really proud of Dago for taking it by the horns and covering it, even though it's not mainstream news. Um, stories like that made me really proud to be affiliated with this channel and this group of people. And the way that he takes on issues like that, like fearless style and he still I know he's got an edge to him and I know he says what's on his mind but at the same time I really appreciate and respect the way that he's very respectful and there's a lot of times yeah he does get riled up and he definitely did today you could tell this one really hit him close to the heart he gets a little fired up and a little feisty but I love the way that he comes at it from almost a fatherly angle and he's got a real knack for getting to the heart of things and making you feel it from whether it's the victim, the family, whoever side of the story. So um, everybody who was on earlier today, um, yeah, I neglected a lot of things I was supposed to do today because it was such a powerful message and it really did mean a lot to me. And it was such a gripping story. I just want to say thank you to everybody who was here earlier today because that was you were doing a good thing and i mean maybe it's just me but at least to me it meant a whole lot and i thought it was covered with the utmost of respect and dignity and with melissa uh pamela too i mean i know you're our expert overseas across the ponds but i really appreciate the fact that you guys devoted that much time to the show and to the story to let us have like your expertise and your local knowledge in the situation. So just, I love y'all. Y'all are a great fam and I'm so glad to be a part of it. We're, so I'm done gushing now. I'll fangirl out. We're glad to have you here. Sorry guys, I had a technical thing going on in my kitchen that nobody else could fix. So I am back. My apologies. Freeze fire? No, no, no. It was something with a. Uh, oh, good. It uh, could have been worse than A kitchen utility type thing. It, it, it's hard to explain, but anyway, it, I'm back. Um, drinking some scotch and loving it. 
Oh, I missed them, Dave. Don Camilla return. Thank you, Dover Dad. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, that was my thing back in the day. I haven't drank in four years, folks, but um, scotch was my thing. Uh, and uh, bourbon and scotch, I, I just, I loved them. Yeah, I loved it. But anyway, I don't miss it, to be honest with you. Thank you, Dover Dad. Again. All right, folks. Again, sorry for the delays and all the interruptions and stuff and all the background noise and all that fun stuff. So anyway, guys, I still only got 16 folks in here. This is nuts. Oh, well, I guess I'll wait just a few more minutes and then get to the roll in. You want me to put a thing up? Yeah, I can't wait to see Dover Mom's video either. I'm definitely interested. Uh, I'm working to it. That's for sure. So got to show the love. I cannot yet. My other one's got to charge up before I can. What are you talking about? Oh, the, uh, I got this one and then I got this one. So this one's got to charge up before I can. Is that what you have anything on phones? Right now, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. No worries. Whatever works for you. I mean, that's not a problem. I just. I mean, I got, I, JJ just got me a brand new iPhone uh, yesterday. So. I definitely cannot complain. It's, I mean, other than the fact that it's an iPhone. I mean, I, you know, it is what it is. Good job, JJ. Well, you know, I, I did the Android thing <laughs> for a while, and it's just everything's just so seamless and easy and high quality and takes all the, oh, my God, oh, 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 like guesswork out. Like today, like you see, I was just, bam, ready to go. That's the Apple aspect of it. And I'll tell you what, I have always had Androids. I did have an iPhone 1. I hated it. I have a new Motorola. I've always usually had Samsung Galaxy. I went with LG one time to try something new. It was all good. I got this. Um, uh, it's the Motorola. Okay. This is uh, this phone, you guys. This puts Android like on the map in my opinion the thing first of all the camera is insane okay it literally is like a professional grade camera i've never seen pictures that are so looks cool. like an iphone probably yeah. just the same it's it's exact it's beautiful and the pictures the videos are i can see people's pores on their on their face guys it's nuts um and it's one of the other uh, you know the uh stylo built into it all that crap i mean it's just a, it's a great phone well, another thing you got to keep in mind, Dago, is I'm completely vainglorious, and uh, I'm using the forward-facing on this brand-new iPhone, so not all no, those beautiful, great. gorgeous cameras <laughs> that my husband just bought yeah. me. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you guys can see for yourselves. It's, you know, wow, close up, and it's got great picture. It really does, so... Um, I'm not, I'm not down. I'm not down. I just don't like Apple, guys. I can't do it, so... No worries. What's up, Booney? Welcome back. Good to have you. Good to see you. Hi, Grandma Bunny. Hi. Grandma Bunny's in the house. Is that Grandma Bunny? Who is John? Ms. Boone. Boom! And guys, do me a favor. Please leave some DNA on that like button, guys. That way I can come out you later and drag you back on in here. Hit it like a big rig with no break. Hard. <laughs> and Boone, just so you know, every time you come in the chat, even if I'm not up on here, I still go, Boone! Aiden, did you find your shirt? Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, I don't want to make everybody wait. Guys, do me a favor. If you haven't seen the ad popping out, please let me know. Again, folks, hit that like button. Leave some DNA. Good evening, Miss Boone. And I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. I'm sure you're looking wonderful as well. <clears throat> me. Um, uh, yeah, all of my new requests that I have to ask for all the time. But uh, again, Hit that like button, guys. Leave some DNA. Uh, share this out, please. As Miss Heather's saying right now, please share this out. Uh, this is these are all the new YouTube requests, and and they really want us sharing these. They want comment comment section. 
So please share it out. Hit the like button and leave me some comments, folks. I really appreciate that so very much. Thank you, Heather. I usually try to stay on top of the promotion and linking and advertising and stuff like that outside, but obviously I can't tonight. I can't even see chat tonight. I miss my Pete. I miss Heather. That was very quick and very good with stuff, guys. She's a pro. She's my banner. That's a fact. It's on it. I keep asking you, how did you get all these hot, incredibly smart mods? Like, I have no idea. I still have to help that every day. I have no idea. I just keep imagining you taking big cardboard boxes with sticks and then putting like whatever hot girls like inside of it and like pulling the string. That's right. Yeah. Like you're a moderator now. They were they were drawn to me for some reason. I have no clue why, but here they are. I'm very happy with it. And now you're a moderator. Learn code, even if you're a cat. <laughs> It. Um, yeah, but Buzz has a good idea. Um, a lot of people I've had do that too. When they can't see chat, you can turn on your phone if you're in a different thing, if you're or a different phone, and pull it up on that, and you'll be able to see chat and, as you're going. Yeah. It's charging now. Oh, it's still charging. Well, whenever it's done, if you want to see what's going on in chat, anything that anybody talks to you, I'll put it up on the screen for you. But until then, want. Um, uh, if you want, whenever that's charged, you can check it out that way. Will do. Thanks for the info, Bryce. I don't know if that's Dan or if that's Steve. Either one, whoever it is, thanks for being here, brother. Cheers, gentlemen. Oh, no, thanks no. For I need some of your people in here, bro. You get all sorts of people over there. Face orange, race dive. <laughs> What is that all about? Why am I hearing that? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. Ooh, that's weird. My, my stream sound. If you guys can hear this from my side, my stream sound haunted. I ain't lying. Which is weird because we're like crystal clear, like all around yesterday. I mean, it's crystal here on, on this side, too, other than there's some kind of a feedback. It sounds like a voice repeating what I'm saying in a very, very deep voice like that. And it's like, what the hell is going on? Uh, yeah, she's saying there's a lot of interference, too. I don't use my I don't know what it is. Let me mute myself, and I want you to talk, Nikki, and I want... Everybody to listen. Tell me if you hear that interference. Here we go. Hi, I'm Nikki. I have three giant, humongous dogs that think that they're kitty cats and like to walk on the back of the furniture and curl up on our lap like bunny rabbits. Unless you're a stranger. And then they try to eat you like you're a drumstick. How's that? Okay. Yeah, it did. It does sound like they're shuffling the phone around in their pocket. Now, let me you mute Nikki, and I'm gonna talk. And I'll see what got here. All right. Here we go, folks. La la la. So, thank you guys again for joining me tonight. I do very much appreciate this. Um, again, this is episode seven in the series. Um, I'm not sure. We're, of course, we're gonna do our poll tonight for the next one. Um, People, again, guys, leave me in the comments any ideas for shows that you guys have when it comes to this series. If you want to hear, you know, a specific movie that you know is based on a true story, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Throw it in the chat or in the comments, guys. Let me know. OK, I really, really uh, I mean, I have plenty of them I can choose from. But again, guys, this is your channel. This channel is for you. And I want you to put your your request in for that kind of stuff so we can do it for you. Uh, so very, very much. I appreciate your guys' input too. Okay. I heard nothing that time. And somebody says that I think it's her earbuds. And thank you, Heather. <clears throat> Which I don't know. I, I, it's very quiet now. I'm mute now, Nikki, and see, see what happens. Is it now? All right. So, yeah, see, I hear it now. 
Is it? Could it be the earbuds? Well, yeah, it's like a, it's like me, but it's in a very low tone coming back. Hello, hello. Now I don't hear it at all. Very good. Yeah, it's super quiet now. Thank you, Dover Dad, for that. Very much appreciated. Reverb, yes, Miss Boone. Reverb. Uh, does the earbuds have a mic on them? That's scratching against your shirt, maybe. That's Dan or Steve is asking. That could do it because it does sound like like when you're walking, if somebody butt dials you and they're walking, you hear them walking, you hear the phone rustling in their pocket. It was. It was kind of insane. The noise. I was trying to figure out what the hell it was the whole time. <clears throat> we are hearing Dago and Nikki's mic is what they're saying. Okay. That may have been what it was. Okay. No, oh, did JJ text what it was? That's what he said, too. Yeah, JJ had said the uh, earbuds have a mic in them, too. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I don't hear it now. Cool. Well, Sweet. all of us is turning the active mic mic off. Yep, so. we figured it out, everybody. Thank you for your input, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank as you. much as I fidget around with my hair, that's probably what the rustling sound was because I'm a fidgeter. That's all good, hun. Thank you so much for figuring that out and fixing it. I appreciate you. It'd be good. And I used the downtime to put a blast up on my Facebook. So, I mean, we could get 5,000 perverts in here. I don't know. But. Uh, hey, whatever. Thanks, uh, JJ. I appreciate you, brother. I do. Does she have a mic on her chest? I think we, can, we got it fixed now. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Thank you, folks. So again, <laughs> um, I'm not waiting around. This is as pathetic as this is. There's nobody in here right now. I guess people don't like me in the evening time, but that's okay. Um, we'll work I it out. I don't think we'll it's that. It I think it's that it's Friday night. Well, that's all good. It's all good. I got the important people. It's good. The people that are here are the important people. And I love you all for being here. That's very true. So, again, guys, uh, we will uh, get this rolling. Again, guys, the movie The Clove Hitch Killer, great movie, Edward Norton. If you've never seen it, please check it out. And, again, this was uh, Miss Nikki. Uh, it was her suggestion, and I thank you, Nikki, for that. I do. Again, valuable, valuable member of the team, folks. I have... A handful of people that I have on my quote unquote investigative team. Um, and they are absolutely amazing. Every single one of them. My moderators are included in that. Um, everybody in, in, the, in the community, I love you guys to death. You know that. But I have a team that we all work together to do what we do to bring things to you. So again, Nikki, thank you for all you do. You are so very appreciated as always. And thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. Go ahead, house, get everybody. Molly. And that's what I just said, Molly Cat. Don't worry. Miss Molly is another one that's very important to my team. I got people on my team over in the UK, folks. I got people in Australia, folks. I cannot go wrong. I have a great, great team. And I have a beautiful community with the beautiful people, folks. And I am so happy to have all you guys. So thank you once again. Uh, like I was saying, guys, if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, it is a great movie. Uh, Clove Hitch Killer, Edward Norton. And it is about BTK. Uh, I'll give you guys a little look-see, just in case you haven't seen it. Uh, I smell something's cooking in my kitchen, and it does smell good. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I got Chinese food waiting for the break in between the two. There you go. Yeah. All right, guys, here's the just a little preview of the trailer for the movie in case you haven't seen it. It'll give you a little insight into it, but you got to check it out. It is a good movie. I'll be honest with you. I watched it a couple times. Um, Dylan McDermott just nails it. Yeah. And then you wouldn't get... think somebody that good looking in mainstream could be that creepy, but nails mm -hmm. it. I agree. I do agree. Um, so you do think he's good looking. Absolutely, he's good looking. 
I I'm knew secure. I saw that calendar Listen, on your wall that one time. I am beyond secure in my sexuality, and I have no worries, my dear. I can call what it is. If a, if a guy's a good-looking guy, he's a good-looking guy. It is what it is. I have no fear, no worries, guys. Do you want a sexy fireman calendar? You go for it, buddy. I've done that, actually. I'm JJ just fist pumped over here. You can't see that, oh, but sir. he just totally, like... <laughs> You do it, brother. You do like, it. All right. Oh, man. Okay. So, yeah, serious. Back to business. Let's check it ass trailer out, folks. You are the best young lady that he has brought home to me. Also, the only one. Yeah. Not time. Uh oh. Hey, Dago, we're down. Buddy. You guys really don't want me to make up lines for movies because it gets out of control and we will definitely get shut down. <laughs> hey, buddy. Dago. It's awesome. Yes. There we go. We were, uh, we were deaf watching the clip. You what? It muted the clip with your mic. Oh, damn it. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Good God, this computer. It's okay. Just want to let you know. <laughs> I told them you do not want me to make up lines for people. I feel, I feel, I, this is so embarrassing when this stupid shit happens. And my microphone just fell down, too. That's cute. Always something in my house. Let's try it again. <laughs> You are the best young lady. There we go. Also, the only one. Yeah. Not time exemplifies the strength of a group or family. How come that doesn't have to have a group on? Because your class is on You know about that clothing stuff, right? Ten official victims. No fingerprints, no blood. Just the clothing tied to every victim's house. I don't mean to talk to you. You know we're made in God's image. But men like you and me, we got thoughts. I'm telling you what, guys. His <laughs> dad in this movie, I mean, he creeped me out. Pops into your head, right? Dylan McDermott did a great job. You know what pop your head right now? A bad thought. Does that look like your father's handwriting? Something like grabbing one of these tools and wham! There. Awkward talk with Dad. Over. I think you're done, Scoobitch. I don't know. Something's going down. Something bad. He's insane. He's my dad. Maybe you don't know what a normal dad is like. She's manipulating you. <clears throat> and this scene here, that this this part Ooh, here. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out, guys. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed at all. It's a good one. It really is. I've watched it, I don't know how many times. <laughs> um, Me too. And that one scene is just like, oh my God, kid, turn around. Don't turn your back. Just turn around. Like, oh my God. Me, exactly. <laughs> word for word, what I was saying to him the entire time. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get behind him. Let him walk in front of you. Blah, 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 blah. It just didn't happen. You know what I mean? I'd rather have a creep dad. Oh, than a creep oh. dad. Okay, guys. Romance yeah, too. I do agree with that one, Pink. It'd be better to movie. have a creep dad than a creepy dad. <laughs> Either way, it's bad. So, uh, but that the is the thing where he does the hammer and goes, "Oops, awkward dad talk." It's just like, yeah. "Oh my god, no!" Ah! It, was, it was insane. You are not lying, my dear. Maybe it's lying. different with like fathers and daughters, but like my dad would have never talked to me about that or anything like that. Uh, no, no. Nope, uh, nope. 
Nope. And don't get me wrong, my dad is the king of the tall white socks with the fresh blue and white New Balance sneakers mowing the grass. My dad but used to that way, but my mother fixed him. Uh, she's been trying for years, <laughs> but she got him. He Now he wears, and my dad cracks me up, he's almost 70 years old, and she's got him wearing designer jeans. Whatever those jeans are with the, the designer oh. stitching on the back pocket. Uh, you know, That's so cute. Goes, it, it, it actually is. Um, he goes to the, <laughs> the barber and he gets lined up now and all this fun stuff. I mean, it's like, what the hell? What are you doing, mom? Let him be. I said, <laughs> I said you better be careful. I said, because he no. don't at all. And I said, these women are going to be all over him. I mean, he's all white now, but it's still it's lined up nice and neat. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> he's kind of wine and diner. Let him do it. <laughs> right. So. But anyway, folks, is that how many guys you can be cool with banging your mom, but your dad's one of them, you know. Yep, yep. Um, that is the movie, and <laughs> we are going to jump into a it's a documentary based on the real BTK, and you'll see the similarities, as I said, and as I always show you guys. Um, I will let uh Nikki do some commentating on this because this was her suggestion, uh, and she has a bit of a likeness to this story, so. We will go from there. Let's see. We'll have a liking for it, not a likeness to it. No. That's, that's what I meant. A likeness. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I said likeness for it, not to it. She, no, she's not She's not yeah. like the BTK killer, folks. She just has a passion for the story behind it. There we go. Allegedly. Let him be a passionate granddaddy. I got you, Pink. I got you. All right, here we are, everybody. There you go. Again, guys, if there are any issues whatsoever with the audio, please let me know. Obviously, like this last time, I promise you I won't mute it for you. Why did B... And, and let's ask some questions here real quick. If anybody has any before we get rolling with this, why did BTK stop so long? It's a good question. Uh, it may be answered in this. Um, and, and a lot of the serial killers that we've looked, that I've looked into, cause I looked into a lot of them, obviously this is why I do what I do. Um, I think personally it was because he had a family guys and because he was, uh, you know, he didn't want to lose that in a sense, you know, his daughter, uh, I listened to an interview with his daughter. Um, that was what her, 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 her thinking was, you know, that, you know, he was there, he was a, a good dad at, at most number of points but you know i'm not saying that he's a good dad period but so and dober dad just said his family so yeah i mean there it is folks can i interject for a second? what's that can i interject for a second you absolutely can say whatever you want maybe just a little bit of a teaser for what's going to drop tomorrow on my channel but my insight on it is um i don't think it was, oh my gosh, my family, their needs come first. I think it was more of the mindset of, I feel powerful because I'm the boss of this family and I'm the leader of this church now, or I got this job that provides me a position of authority that I can impose on everybody else. And my family's giving me the respect that I need to feel gratified to where I don't have to seek more desperate measures. I don't, so I just wanted to kind of, Maybe that's, put that out there. It, it, I don't that's think good. it was like, oh my gosh, I love my family more than anything else. Right. And that's a good point, Nikki. I appreciate you putting it out there like that because that kind of does sum it up in a sense based on, you know, what we know about him and what we're about to find out about him. For those of you that don't know about him, um, that makes sense. It really does. So I, I appreciate your input on that. I really do. No, no uh, so there's an answer for you, Mr. David, if that works. Um, Let's see what everybody else thinks about this, guys. Um, moving along. We found a 13 year old girl in the basement hanging from a water pipe. In that letter to us, BTK said, how many more people do I have to kill before I get some publicity? 
there may be victims out there that we have no clue of the BTK Strangler hides in women's bedroom closets. He kills women, men, small children. Nobody is safe. Nobody. And that is the thing that was uh, specifically different about him than other serial killers. A lot of serial killers have an MO. Dahmer went for, you know, typically homosexual men. Um, Gainesville went for, younger, you know, younger, younger women and so on and so forth. And like, that's what's different about him is he was not uh, specific. He did what he did to who he did when he wanted to. And that's, you know, what made him who he was. Uh, he was playing games with the cops. Big dog. Oh, absolutely, David. I absolutely agree. Um, thank God. As I the said level before. of arrogance he had to have to put out that ad and put that feel out for the police and say, uh, be honest with me. If I send you a floppy disk, you won't crack it, will you? Be honest. And mm-hmm. then they're like, so like you watch the interviews and they're like, so we lied to him. Like they mm-hmm. pull out, say, we lied to him. And right. we were like, no, nah, it's all fine, Rex. And uh, then it was, you know, he was like so upset. And that was his only thing he was actually upset about interrogation. In fact, he even said, somebody needs to let my wife know I won't be home for dinner. Just uh, yeah. a cucumber. But he was upset that you lied to me in that Craigslist article or that classified I, article. I agree like, on that one. Uh, thank you, Ms. Heather. I do appreciate that. They would be on it. Like you thought they were friends playing your game? Right, right. Um, again, guys, this uh, trigger warning, there are some sensitive and or violent content involved in this uh, that may not be suitable for all viewers, guys. If you would feel uncomfortable, please feel free to step away. Uh, there's no issues with that. I completely understand. Uh, and thank you again. Ms. Absolutely. Heather, all respect. Absolutely. Um, David said, I think he felt worthless. It's very possible, David. Very possible. Uh, you don't know, uh, sadly, what goes through the minds of these people? Um, it's such a uh, interesting, like I I personally would like to be able to study the mind of a serial killer and pick it apart piece by piece to look into the reasons why these things happen, folks. Of course, I'm never going to be I think that's every true crime fan. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Whether uh, it's to keep on your that, toes and be prepared. All right. Situation or just for yeah. curiosity. I, yeah. See, I've always thought April that that was a cover in some senses that he needed to have that there for himself. I think that alone made himself with the whole church thing made him feel good about himself based on what he was doing. Do you know what I mean? Um, that that's oh, my April, thought on that. that. What's that? I said, "Oh, April, you got to watch my episode tomorrow." Well, we are all going to. She might have just spoiled it. Oh, she might have just spoiled it, but nail on the head there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Moving on, everybody. Sorry for the interruptions. Like I said, I will be commentating through here in and out. Miss Nikki will be too. So. You know what we're past. You can feel the spring storms blowing back into Kansas. This is a live look from Sky Tracker in downtown Wichita. Clouds already rolling in, bringing with them the promise of a stormy weekend. This is the story of one of the most extraordinary events in criminal history. A story that has terrorized a small mid-American city for the last 30 years. The conservative city of Wichita, roughly the size of Coventry, is slap bang in the middle of the American heartland. With a population of just 500,000, the city prides itself on its friendly, peaceful community. But Wichita harbors a dark past that has recently returned. In the 70s, this peaceful community was shattered. Wichita had a serial killer on its hands. The murderer became known as the BTK killer due to the method in which he bound, tortured, and killed his victims. After his seventh victim, BTK disappeared, and for the past two decades, Wichita has tried to forget these horrific events. But in 2004, all that changed. This is Cape News on your side. 
Good evening, everyone. Breaking news tonight. A letter sent to the Wichita Eagle is now believed to be from the BTK killer. It's a story that broke first on cake late this afternoon. Now, the BTK killer hasn't been heard from in decades, but now it appears he may be back. The one thing about BTK that makes him absolutely unique is he's the only serial killer to elude capture for more than 30 years and continue to communicate with the police. What brought him back is something to me. Sorry to interrupt. But that is a standpoint that I had to put on or talk about in 30 years, guys. In a 30-year period of time, he eluded police and continuously, and I mean continuously, uh, kept in contact with them and just kept teasing and playing and doing his thing. Um, 30 years, guys. It's a long time. Like I said, to break it down and make it simple, that takes balls. I'm sorry. There's something there. I don't know if it was the arrogance. Or if it was the curiosity, but he thought they were playing along with him. Yeah, that's why that he was too. so insulted that they lied to him. You know. Yeah, I agree on that. Yeah, nothing like some bacon cheeseburgers and serial killer doc. There you go, bro. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Mike? Good to see you, brother. Thanks for joining us tonight, and all you meat boys. Thanks so much for being here in the sauce with us, having a great Friday night. Thank you so much. Yep, yeah. Yep. That was corny, but it's all good. I like to throw that voice out here and there. You, you know, know what? You're a dad. You're allowed a few a week. Cabs are here. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Moving on. That accent. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> right. <clears throat> change in his life did he go on drugs did he go off drugs did he get married did he get a divorce did he have a baby what what happened in this guy's life to bring him back this is kind of unprecedented we don't usually have serial killers out there who wait so many years decades to then return and say haha i'm i'm here i'm alive in your community and i'm threatening you again the news of btk's return has once again plunged the city of wichita into a state of panic <laughs> One man knows more than any what BTK's reemergence could mean for the community. Now retired, Benny Dowatsky was one of the original detectives to work the case. There was always a feeling, even after I retired, that that was the one case that uh, we weren't able to solve or identify the, the killer. Uh, and then to have him resurface, and of course brought hope again, that uh, maybe a new investigation, uh, new forensics, uh, new minds, uh, new detectives on the case, and uh, might bring this to a solution. <laughs> During the 70s, murders in Wichita were a rare occurrence. But the events of one cold January day would change that forever. Thank you, Heather. Anybody that would like to donate to support the channel and me, there's the PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo uh, accounts, please. And thank you so very much. Much appreciated. Were burned, tortured, and killed in their home. The Otero killings in 1974 were a huge, huge story. At the scene, it was a small frame home. Mm. Uh, four people were dead inside when I arrived. The police were combing all over the scene. Hold on. Um, yeah, hold on a second. I just, JJ just told me the chat. Oh my God. Uh, Kiki, I'm so sorry. You lost your great. That's horrible, Kiki. I am so, so sorry. My condolences. I'm so sorry. Is there, if there's anything we can do? Yeah, you know where we're at, honey. I know that sounds, I know that sounds stupid, but please. I am so sorry, Kiki, and please don't worry about being here. My God. No, babe, this is just a movie. This is. You have, you have all of our thoughts and prayers uh, continuously. Uh, if there's anything, you know how to reach me. Even if you just need to talk, uh, I'm here, and you know that. So um, just do what you I need to do. I have my email out there for you. If you need any anybody who's been through losing a baby, um, okay. I can, yeah. Whatever, whatever you need, hon, we're here. Uh, you know that. Good God, that's horrifying. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it never gets to. Oh, man. Whew. Okay. 
2016. And it was hard for Wichitans at that point to believe that four members of a family had been killed. That just didn't happen in Wichita, Kansas. So for us in Wichita, this story was huge. Today, the Otero House at 803 North Edgemoor still stands. Bernie Drowatsky was one of the first detectives to arrive on the scene and returns 30 years later to recall the terrifying events that took place there. Well, it's been 30 some years since I've been in this house. It's exactly as I remember it. There was no forcible entry that we could find into the residence on the Otero homicide. The telephone line had been cut. The best I recall, the bed was to the, to the west. Mrs. Otero was on the bed, uh, kind of at an angle, and Mr. Otero was on the floor. They had both been bound and strangled and were both deceased. It was an extremely upsetting scene to go in and, and find those people, especially the two youngsters. The best of my recollection, this is the room that Joseph was in, on the floor on his back. I believe he was nine years old. He was face up, feet bound. His head was wrapped with a uh, pillowcase and towel, plastic of some type. Further going through the house, we found a welcome, Mama girl Bear, in the in the basement, hanging from a water pipe. This is a stairway going downstairs. This is where the little girl Josephine was found hanging in this basement. This pipe was a pipe. The rope was up and over and around her neck. Her feet were so far off the floor. In all of these homicides, there was no sexual attack on any of the victims, but there was uh, semen left at many of the scenes. So uh, I'm sure there's a sexual gratification of some type to these killings. BTK Strangler is a sadist. He loves watching people suffer. When he killed the Otero family, he probably enjoyed very much killing one and having the other family members have to hear <laughs> the loved one dying. The person who went there had to control four people, had to tie them up and torture them for a long period of time. And this was broad daylight. The killer in this case really spent time watching the house, knowing what was going on. He did a lot of surveillance. He had to know what the family did. He had to know that Joseph Otero, the father, would also be there at some point. Over the period of time that we worked these cases, what did we overlook or what did we miss? Somewhere there had to be a clue that we didn't pick up on. Mm. It'd be a blessing to have closure to know that the person responsible for this. Uh, had now, something else I want to point out, guys, for you guys to kind of pay attention to a little bit. Um. It's been said, although I, I feel differently about it, um, it's been said that the current case in Idaho, um, Brian Koberger, that this case here is kind of a, uh, he kind of copycatted this one in a sense. I think, <clears throat> I think it's, it's a multi, a couple of different cases, like a little bit of this. Um, I think that he may have followed the Gainesville Ripper in some senses, because there's a lot of likenesses to that as well. But just keep Absolutely. that in mind. Um, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, keep it in mind that there could be a couple different variations of this, because, you know, he was obsessed with serial killers, folks. This is what he went to school for, in a sense, basically. So, that being said. Under, under the only person that BTK ever freely communicated, like, correspondence yeah. with, and... That's right. Um, there's a lot of similarities. You're right. The 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 multiple. Uh, I think it was four victims for mm -hmm. each, or was it five? Um, and then there was uh, you know, the age when they both started, which was 28. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the type of weapon. The uh, yeah, the the type of weapon, the distance. Um, I know right. the the cause of death was different, but um, the distance between like, you know, nobody even thought Dennis Rader knew this family, you know, just like nobody thought Brian Koberger knew that house, that sort that's of right. thing. Um, Absolutely. Yes. Just, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, for those of you that don't know, by the way, and then thank you for stating that his name is Dennis Rader. Um, yeah. His actual name. I should have said that in the beginning, but that is his actual name for if anybody wants to look. Look that up or check it out. Yeah. He's absolutely right, folks, with what she's stating. So, again, 
very I very interesting my previous life backdrops and seeing i thought i got in trouble the one time because i painted uh i painted a picture of bck in court where he got all like uppity and frustrated and he had his hands on his hips and stuff and mm -hmm. i put it near the front door that way jk would always laugh at least once in the morning before he went to work and it just says the actual word but f and dennis yeah and he's got like a hmm face on so. yeah, right right uh, and yes, Mama Bear, I did it's see that. I, absolutely. Absolutely. Mama Bear, I did see that, by the way, and I'm actually grateful because I've said that from the beginning, folks. Um, the Idaho house uh, needed to be burnt to the ground. Uh, and there is an article yeah. uh, that's out there that they were, which is why I think they may have put the fence up now, that they are demolishing the house and probably burying it right there on property. So that's a good thing. Um in my opinion, there needs to be nobody else living in that home. There needs to be nothing else with that home at this point. It just needs to be gone. Um, so, if you believe in any type of spiritualism or elementalism or anything like that, just put an artificial pond in. They need to fresh put fresh water park. to clear any. Yeah. Put some yeah, benches. Yeah, and then do like a pier yeah. with like an overlook and bench memorial. Yeah. I agree. Exactly. Do that. That would just be perfect. Crash that house. Memorial Make Park it would be beautiful for that. Yep. Nice pond with a pier. Right. There we go. Absolutely. Um, but thank you for that, Mama Bear. I appreciate yep, that yeah. as well. Here I we really am going to look into that. That's a good idea. It really is. Because that, in that spot right there, and it is across from the band field and stuff like that, I mean, it would be a good place sadly that it is the resting place of the last you know place they were alive um uh yes yeah, sherry and you will be in there too soon because you remember i'm it is almost done guys i promise you um you guys will all be in there uh anybody that's a member that's a meatball you will be in the sauce it's called check that out um uh, in discord i just gotta get i got a few of you guys in there already i gotta get everybody else in there i just gotta post it and get it all in because there's quite a few of you guys so that's why you know i was gonna do it every single person but i'm not gonna be able to do that so um <clears throat> i will get a link to you miss sherry and we will get together on that and get everybody else that's in there so my apologies it's taken so long um and back to what we're doing but again thank you mom bear for that good things are worth waiting for yes Yes, they are. Thank you. For that. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna look into that, Mama Bear. You've been apprehended. It really would. Despite a thorough investigation into their terror murders, the police had no leads and even struggled to find a motive. Once you've committed a crime to this extent, you are a serial killer. A person who commits a crime like the terror family killing is going to want to go on and do something else. In 2004. The small mid-American town of Wichita was shocked at the news that its most notorious serial killer returned after a 25-year silence. The BTK Strangler, so-called because of the way he bound, tortured, and killed his victims, began his killing spree back in January 1974, when he brutally murdered four members of the Otero family. Regardless of who the target was in the first murders, the Otero family murders, we see an element of enjoyment there. This killer really enjoyed killing the family, each one of the, them individually, and he got a sexual release from that. This puts him over into the category of serial killer already, that he loves the concept of killing. He would want to do it again. No worries, Molly. On April the 4th, 1974, three months after- Hold on, I have a quick question. Case, Police were called to the home of 21-year-old Catherine Bright, who lived just two hey. miles away. Catherine Bright and her brother had returned home, and upon entering the residence... Did you say something, hon? Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, if they're tearing it down this semester, how are they going to walk the jury through it? And that's the whole reason they've been preserving it, right? Uh, the defense has already been through the house, and I don't know if they... I don't know how they did that and how they would do it, but. That's not just half-assing it. That's quarter taking it. Mm -hmm. that's I'm not saying that thing needs to stand forever. I'm all, all in favor of tearing the thing down. But you need to walk a jury through that house because that was the original reason it was left like that. 
and why those poor kids were left in there so long and all those photographs and all that well, evidence was left there. What I heard happened. That was the prosecution's original statement. What I heard happened um, was that they went through with a video camera and documented every room, everything, every every piece. And supposedly they're going to put that, like do a virtual walkthrough with everybody in court. I agree. They should have actually physically possibly mm -hmm. done it. But a lot of people, from what I understand, are uncomfortable with that. That video is going to, mm, 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 somebody's going to like that. You know, they will. Absolutely. I do not want to be there for that. Mm -mm. Sorry, uh, I'll, I'll let you get back. I just saw that pop up on the screen. And I was just like, say what? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree. So. I agree with you. <laughs> I do. Oh, uh, yeah. No worries. Okay. No worries. All right, guys, moving along. Let's see here. All right. Bench were confronted by an individual that had been waiting in the house. He emerged from her bedroom closet with a gun, told them he was going to rob them. Struggle ensued between uh, Kevin Bright and the individual, and Kevin was bound to a chair. Kevin uh, fought free, grappled with the man, but the man shot Kevin in the side of the head, uh, knocking him unconscious, although the killer thought Kevin was dead. Kevin woke and, and heard his sister being uh, strangled, being attacked by this guy. He went to her aid. Um, and again, then he was shot in the face. Kevin managed to stumble out the front door on the 13th Street where a passerby found him and called uh, emergency. Catherine Bright had been stabbed three times in the abdomen. Despite police and medical crews arriving at the scene, she died later in hospital. Kevin Bright survived the ordeal, but police felt the extent of his injuries made his description of the killer unreliable. In the months that followed, police received their first breakthrough in the Otero case. Three men openly confessed to the killings, and it wasn't long before the news made the front pages. Much to the relief of the community. The police department made some arrest uh, in December 1974. It was during that period of time that uh, we, the news media picked up on it, and it became knowledge to the, to the community that we had people in custody. And that's when we received our first communication from the Strangler. <laughs> October the 22nd, 1974, a man called the Wichita Eagle newspaper and directed them to the public library where they would find a letter hidden in an engineering book. The police were immediately notified and the letter was retrieved by lead detective Bernie Jawatsky. Upon retrieving that letter and bringing it back and reading the letter, we determined that it most definitely was from the individual who had been in the Otero house and had committed all four of the killings. The letter said, those three guys didn't do it. I did it, and here's how you know I did it. He went on to describe in detail what the Otero crime scene looked like. Um, the police realized that only the killer could have known those details. There's some speculation that he actually photographed the scene, all of the scenes, and that's how he kept all these details straight. The letter, filled with grammatical errors, was from the killer himself. He took sole responsibility for the Otero murders, and went on to reveal accurate details of the crime scene. The killer spoke of a monster that couldn't be stopped and signed off with a signature that would become his trademark, as well as a chilling promise of further victims. I agree, Dober Dad. One of the most unusual aspects about the BTK strangling case is that there were communiques with the police. Now, many people watching Hollywood think that all serial killers worry, want to have April. a cat and mouse game with the police and send them send them letters, but it is really an extremely rare event. In a desperate attempt to find the killer, police stepped up their investigation, recruiting more officers to the case. But the trail of BTK mysteriously went cold, and it would be another three years before he was heard from again. <laughs> The next murder would have been Shirley Vian. Shirley uh, was a single mother living alone with her three children. Uh, as I recall, the oldest child was like eight, and then there were two younger children. Apparently, at one point in time, an individual had stopped one of the children on the street and showed a picture of a person and asked if he knew that person or if they lived there. The child didn't apparently know that, 
and then later apparently the same man appeared at the door and gained entry into that residence. Once he was in the house, he pulled a handgun, again, similar to the Catherine Wright murder, told him he was going to rob them, uh, put the children in a bathroom. This is a bathroom that the children were locked in. This door at the time was not here. This was a solid wall. And the kids were placed in here and the door tied shut in some manner so they couldn't get out. The oldest child heard what he thought his mother uh, being murdered, which was what was happening. And he helped his, uh, he was eight years old. Uh, there was also a six-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. There was a very small window in the bathroom. Thank you, love you. There was a window on this north wall. And this was a window that kids used access to to finally get out of the bathroom. When the police arrived, uh, Shirley Vian had been bound and strangled, similar to the Oteros. She was found on the bed, and there was semen left at the scene. Again, uh, she was not raped or anything. This was a new thing, uh, and totally, uh, the police did not understand, I mean, why there was semen on Josie Otero, the girl who was hung in the basement. Uh, there was semen uh, near Shirley Vian. So after a while, they understood this was a sexually motivated serial killer. Our theory is that what he was doing is that he was strangling them, and as they were dying, he was probably masturbating at the time. He apparently actually saw the people dying from the strangulation, and that's what aroused him. If the children had not escaped or something interrupted him, I think we'd have had some dead children in that one also. We have since made every effort in the world to you know, work with these children, try to get a description from them. We had child psychologists work with him uh, and everything. As best we could come up with, he was, again, a white male about mommy's age, which would have put him somewhere in the 30s, early 30s, somewhere in that category. We do know that he, uh, back think back back back, back, which we had always theorized, that he brought the tape with him that he used, the ropes that he used. What's that on? Uh, sorry, I've been trying to pause for a minute. Um, the thing that stopped and interrupted him later came out uh, that the children that survived that attack. Uh -huh. um, he told them as he locked them in the bathroom, if they just sat down and stayed quiet, everybody would be okay. Right. And then when they heard him, right. uh, when they heard him unaliving their mother, I don't know what you want to say and what you don't want to say. Um, they started frantically just trying to beat down the door, screaming, crying, and that disrupted what he had planned to do. Uh -huh. And he went into one of the children's rooms, grabbed a handful of toys, opened the door long enough to throw the toys in there and then relock the door. They still got the door open enough that they saw everything that he did to their poor mother and yeah, exactly. they weren't able to do anything about it. But <clears throat> They were old enough and making enough of a squawk that he was afraid they would identify him. So he took off. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that. that How the, awful. Right. And it, that, that the thing that the whole thing with grabbing a handful of toys and throwing it in the room just to shut the kids up. Like, it's like, what what is going through your head? Because he like, had kids. Well, well I mean, I, he I, had I, kids I, at that point. Like, uh, yeah. But it's like still like, at that point, like. When when you when you saw the kids, you should have just said, "I'm out." By I mean, I mean, this is a serial killer we're talking about, so you can't really reason with the with the scenario. But I get it. I you do. can't say just don't do it because that's not a thought that occurs right, to them. Right. I get that. I mean, obviously, they're not a normal person. They're not really human. They don't. Have I will say though that but, the one thing I'm grateful for is that he didn't didn't unalive them. You know what I mean? Sadly, I mean they don't have parents, but still, it's just like you know. That could have been way worse. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, I think it's only and completely because they were old enough and there was so many of them. Right. That he understood how puny and insignificant he was. And I think, honestly, somewhere deep down inside, he was probably, speculation, afraid they, they could take him. I mean, that's very possible. Or give him a good enough fight. <clears throat> Very possible. I, I can agree with that. I, I can absolutely agree with that. Again, 
again, okay, we don't have a room for that. There's, there's absolutely not normal uh, mind space in there, guys. So we know that much, okay? Um, right. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, yes, Miss Heather, thank you so much for that. Again, guys, trigger warning. Uh, it may include some sensitive, violent content that is not suitable for all viewers. So please feel free to step away at any time without fail, guys. If there's any issues, no shame in that. Right. Guys, I don't I want anybody to be uncomfortable <laughs> ever. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that, hon. Uh, again, guys, if you notice, there's a ticker scrolling across the bottom of the screen for that reason, guys. Just, just because. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add, uh, Nikki, or are you good for right now? Or oh no, I was just I as soon as they started talking about that, and I knew I was going to say something about it, I was uh, like, "Get it from." <laughs> I was that mom. I absolutely <laughs> agree with you on that one. That makes the hair stand up on my 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 arms. You know what I mean? It's just one of them things. My like kid is he just turned 13 he's taller than me he's built like a brick shed house and he could kick most guys asses but i'm still like that's my baby mm. <laughs> i don't want you to hear the scary thing go to your room <laughs> that, I, that's how well you guys have seen caden he's huge and that's the thing i still don't want him seeing or hearing stuff like this you know what i mean not to say exactly. that he does, he does but you yeah, know he's got it. this he is my my uh, mini me. He loves the same things I do, and you guys know that. You guys have seen him, so <clears throat> I get it. Though those are our kids; they're our babies, regardless of how big they are. It is what it is, guys. That's just being a good parent. Yeah, and they'll get over it. They'll they'll grow to be their own their own type of parent with their own kids, and they'll get it. They'll be like, "Oh my god, my mom, my dad was not crazy. I get it now." <laughs> yeah, I agree. I do agree. I do agree. All right, folks, moving along. Big little Dago. Yeah, he's bigger than I am. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's absolutely correct, David. No offense, but he's way uh, better. And we know he had a gun uh, because uh, we, we theorize in, in the Otero case, he had to have a gun to get control of the adults and things of that nature. We know in, in the Kathy Bright case, he had a gun because he shot the brother. And uh, in this particular case, the youngster was able to tell us. In the Otero, Catherine Wright and Shirley Vian murders, police suspected it may be the work of the same individual, but were baffled by the three-year time gap between killings. A serial killer usually kills after something has gone wrong in his life. He has some kind of crisis. Perhaps his wife has asked him for a divorce, or his girlfriend has left him, or perhaps he's just been fired from his job. He's feeling really low, he's angry at the world, and he says, you don't have any respect for me. You, you don't think of anybody. So he goes out and he says, look what I can do to you. He kills somebody, he feels proud of himself, he's got a big ego again, and then he may not do anything again for months and months, or even years, until another crisis appears. And that's why serial killers, they don't kill every month by the moon, like some people think. They kill when they feel a need to kill. As news of Shirley Vian's murder spread, Police Chief Richard Lemonian faced a difficult decision about whether to go public and warn the community of Wichita that there was a serial killer on the prowl. I'm getting advice at this point now from the FBI, from the behavioral science people. You know, should we release this information? Should we not release this information? And, uh, and you get a lot of different advice. And uh, if you ask six people, you get six different opinions. And finally, you have to make a decision. In this particular case, the decision was made that we would not give him credit for it at the time in hopes that he would communicate with us, which he did. But the communication was not what the police were hoping for. That's risky though. He might have just killed somebody else though. What's that, hon? So that's risky though. He could have just killed somebody else for attention though, instead of reaching out to them specifically. But I right. guess they have better trained minds on his behavior, you know. Mm -hmm. But that would have been my fear. I agree. Uh, good point. It is a good point. <laughs> That's okay. That's what we're doing. It's a good point, though. Thank you. <clears throat> About 8.20 a.m. on December 8th, Friday morning, 1977, a caller told a police dispatcher his call was recorded. 
Uh, you have a homicide at 843 South Pershing, Nancy Fox. He communicated directly with the police department in that he told us, you will find a homicide, uh, gave us the exact location, and gave us her name. I just started a new system, which was brand new then, uh, now well known as caller ID. So the caller did not know that the dispatcher knew where the call was coming from. And a police officer was there within two minutes, but the caller, the BTK Strangler, was gone. They then dispatched two officers to 843 South Pershing to check the residence. They did not tell them the purpose of the call. They just wanted the, to check. And I've interviewed one of the officers who was there. He said they initially walked around uh, the house and in the back, they found the back window was broken and the telephone line cut. And they looked at each other and said, you know what we're going to find in here? We're going to find a body. 843 South Pershing was the residence of Nancy Fox, a 25-year-old part-time secretary. She was found uh, on the bed, uh, face down, which uh, was somewhat typical of what he would uh, do with his victims. Her panties had been pulled down between her buttocks and her knees. There was uh, semen left at the scene in a negligee laying by her head. Nancy Fox's father faced the task of identifying her body. When we arrived at the hospital, they took us into this room and, and wanted us to go make an application. I mean, it was... Uh, something you don't want to remember. I could see her face and her feet, but basically it was all, and it was just uh, bruise, black and blue, but enough, there was no, no doubt as to who it was. Most serial killers want to simply commit their crime and get away with it. They never contact the police. They don't want anybody to know about it. They're happy if it just disappears and is swept under the rug so they can go kill again someday. Usually to most serial killers, it's a personal thing. It's between them and the victim. That makes them feel like God when they're able to kill somebody. But there are some serial killers out there who want more than that. They like to play games. They like to see that, that they're smarter than the police. After he makes a phone call, he knows the police are rushing down there and he can imagine them entering the, the apartment and finding what he's done and that excites him. After the murder of Nancy Fox, BTK's seventh victim, police turned all their attention to the phone call and searched for witnesses to give them a detailed description of the killer. We found one witness that claimed he saw the individual on the telephone making the phone call to the police dispatcher. This was an individual that pulled up to use the telephone, saw a man on the phone, didn't have any change, so he went into the store to get some change for the payphone, came back out to use the phone, and the individual was gone, and the phone receiver was dangling from the phone. When he picked it up, my understanding was that uh, he was still an open line to the police dispatcher. He gave us a description at that time, which was a white male, approximately 5'8 to 5'9, light hair, a very generic description. Unable to release a detailed sketch, the police had nothing to go on. They would have to wait until the killer struck again. By the beginning of 1978, the BTK Strangler had viciously murdered four members of the Otillo family, including two children, 21-year-old Catherine Bright, 24-year-old Shirley Vian, and 25-year-old Nancy Fox. Despite devoting many officers and thousands of man-arms, the Wichita Police Department was struggling for leads and had still not made public that there was a serial killer on the prowl. What about, um, Diego, are you there? In January of 1978, the BTK sent a postcard in an envelope to the Wichita Eagle newspaper. It had a poem called Let's Shirley Rocks and BTK. The first line was Shirley Lux, Shirley Lux, what that would be mine. They forgot one. Um, it came into the <clears throat> newspaper and was a... Say again? They forgot. Uh, they forgot. They didn't mention the brother-sister duo that he took on. Where the brother escaped. Maybe they, maybe they added in the end. There's pieces missing from some of these documentaries uh, that I had found. Um, yeah, I guess. That's something they discovered later on after this was filmed, mm -hmm. maybe. But right, uh, that was that was a big thing because that was one of the other parallels I had drawn with the Moscow thing was yeah. the unanticipated surprise male death mm -hmm. and how that was handled. And mm -hmm. um, unfortunately for Ethan, it didn't go the same way that it did 
with um, the brother sister duo with BTK. With BTK, the brother got away. Um, uh, BTK was convinced he was already dead and then moved on to the sister and said the same thing, you know, his classic party line of it's okay, everything's going to be all right, which is also eerily similar to it's okay, I'm going to help you. Right. And uh, the whole wannabe cop routine that they both put. Like played out. Like you're a dog catcher. You are not a police officer, sir. Take several seats. Sit down. Like this is a Wendy. <laughs> right. You're a dog catcher. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Uh, same thing with, you know, Brian Koberger. It was the whole like, oh, I think I'm a cop, so it's okay. I'm here to help you. And then not at all. Well, he did yeah. the same thing to the sister, and then the brother was not. He had not passed away. He was very much alive, and he came to consciousness <laughs> again. And took off running for help for his sister and unfortunately didn't arrive in time, but they yeah. left that out. That was a big deal. <laughs> right, right. No, I agree. I agree. But like I said, some of these docuseries that they have, that they put out, they do forget pieces and parts of things based on the type, the version of the story. <laughs> they tell. Uh, yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> Me? Somebody coughed. Oh, like that was that. Uh, oh, okay. That was Mr. Dober Dad. He's good. Okay, brother. Don't choke there. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. I, I agree with good. you. That there's things like that that are very important to the story that need to be told and heard and understood, which thank the Lord, you just filled that in since it wasn't in there. So there you go. Uh do me a favor. Uh what Nick, I do. if you could please type something in the chat. Oh, you just did. Okay. That's there. Yeah, I, I okay. think that was it might have just been yes. That was I, think, I think it was a glitch. Don't worry about it, David. But thank you for watching, bro. I appreciate it. Again, great <laughs> moderators, guys. Great moderators. Yep, All right, yep, folks, yep. Back to it. Oops, sorry. I keep hitting the wrong thing here. Okay. Back to My it. skin is not camera ready. Oh, hold on a minute. Something happened here. There we go. Back to that. There must be some heavily smoked scotch. <laughs> That's why he's called. Uh, <laughs> good point, Heather. Good point. Uh, off I don't, he's had a little bit of a sinus thing going with allergies and stuff. But we all got the back it. and forth. Like you can go, <laughs> you think Ohio weather's crazy? You should be here, man. Like I'm getting robbed of my winter. It's like seventy something had degrees one, one day. And we haven't had one either. We haven't. I think it snowed yeah. once, one time. That's it. And it's the end of February. Yeah, We're twice, about to into spring. That same thing Drift was talking about earlier with like the poles and everything. Or maybe it was you that had said that. Yeah, um, we, we are getting more snow down here in the south than you guys are up north, which is I know like, real freaking weird. And and the West Coast as well. I just watched on the news tonight. Um, California's under a, a blizzard warning, folks. And they're getting like doubts right now. What? That don't happen. No, Absolutely. it did once. Um, when I lived in, I lived next to Palm Springs, and when I lived there, um, I had my studio and everything like that going. I just got <clears> it up like brick and mortar style, and um, it was my daughter's first winter in California. Right. And um, it snowed eighteen inches. And everybody told me I was crazy. Why are you bringing the snowsuit? And I was like, well, it, it's hers. Like, you know, just in case. Who knows? You know, maybe she's going to want to play in the sprinkler and it'll only be like a few degrees out. Who knows? Right? And yeah. it turns out I have pictures of her standing next to a cactus covered in snow, building a snowman next to the sand castle she had built in our yard the day before. How about that and that? <laughs> There, that's it right there. One day you build a snowman. In the the snow suit, snowman. like, yes, yeah. yeah, like Christmas story. Like, I can't put my arms down. Like, well, she was only two, but so. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty awesome. I love it. That's awesome. It is. <laughs> uh, that's good to <laughs> hear. happened. It's just real weird. Yeah. No, I agree. I do agree. I do agree. <laughs> scotch scotch helps with everything uh jj it really does look at this guy's freaking face 
I Why can't tell if he's had too many bowel movements today or if he really needs to take one. Looks like he needs to take one, in my opinion. Sorry. You're good. Autistic good. thought. We assumed that it was for a bowel instead. Agreed. Motion. So they send it to the poem consistent of Nancy Fox. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. 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 Oh, of course, it was uh, handled as evidence and uh, protected for fingerprints and such and such. Because the Wichita Eagle had not published his Shirley Locke's poem, BTK opened his letter with a question. In that letter, he said, how many more people do I have to kill before I get some publicity? And it was at that point that we knew that he wanted publicity, that he enjoyed the publicity, that he really relied on that publicity uh, in order to probably feed his ego. The letter consisted of two typewritten papers an accurate drawing of Nancy Fox's body, and a poem entitled, O oh Death to Nancy. In the letter, BTK admitted to killing four Everybody members of Bruce Mateo's family. Shirley Vian, Nancy Fox, and taunted the police to guess a further victim, presumably Catherine Brunt. The BTK killer even admitted that he would have killed Shirley Vian's children, but was interrupted. After receiving this letter, Chief Lemonian was forced to face the inevitable. In that particular time, you're getting all these mixed signals. You know, yes, uh, don't give him credit. Yes, give him credit. Well, in my judgment, uh, we didn't give him credit for Shirley Vianne, and we ended up with Nancy Fox. Uh, I don't know, had we given him credit for Shirley Vianne, we'd still had Nancy Fox. I don't know that. So I was going to give him credit, which we did. On the 10th of February, 1978, four years after BTK's first victims, Wichita was finally told the truth. Good afternoon. This morning, KTV was contacted by the person who police say they believe murdered four members of the Joseph Otero family in January of 1974. The communication came in the form of a two-page typewritten letter addressed to KAKE Channel 10. It was signed with the initials BTK. But with us right now is Chief of Police Richard Lemonian. I have a couple questions, Chief. How can you be sure that the BTK letter is authentic? Well, on after reviewing the contents of the letter, there's absolutely no question that the only person who would have the type of information that was included in the letter would have to be the killer himself. Do you know what the, the initials BTK stand for? It's, it's our feeling that the initials that uh, were placed there stand for bind, torture, and kill. BTK itself has killed seven people, Chief. What kind of leads do you have? Well, very honestly, we have no solid leads at all. The press conference was, was actually aimed at two audiences. Uh, number one, the first audience was the community. And number two was to the Strangler. And it was, it was, it was orchestrated for that purpose. Uh, the first idea of a police chief is public safety. I mean, we didn't want another murder. So if we could play with this guy in terms of the games that he played and let him communicate with us in writing as opposed to sending us bodies, that was my goal. But the public reaction was one of fear. This sleepy community had never imagined they would be prey to a serial killer. Wichita was plunged into a state of panic. There was not an unlocked door in this community anymore. Everybody locked the door. Prior to that, this has been a community in which you might leave your keys in the car, you might keep your door unlocked. But since BTK, and since there was a serial killer loose, not anymore. Everything changed. The reaction of the people in Wichita was uh, panic. Everybody was scared. Uh, everybody looked at their neighbors, locked their doors, locked their windows, checked their phone lines. It caused quite a stir. The uh, second shift, the duty sergeant, would always send the, the uh, officers out, reminding them the BTK strangler is out there. He hides in women's bedroom closets. He's armed with a knife and a gun. Be careful. The department encouraged uh, people to call the police if they got home and, and felt anything unusual, if they got home and the door didn't look right or a light was off that should have been on or vice versa. We encouraged people to call and have officers come out and do house checks. they go through the whole building old house and the last thing they would do would be fling open that woman's bedroom closet door with their guns drawn there was never anybody there but they didn't know that they knew that this guy would break in and hide in women's closet some serial killers like to be the movie man they like to scare not only the person they're killing but the entire community these kind of serial killers love a lot of publicity they like having their stories in the newspaper many of these guys will do odd things at the crime 
crime scene just to make it look even creepier so that people get more and more terrified and they start being afraid to walk on the streets at night, afraid to enter their apartments. That gives them a thrill of not only controlling the <laughs> crime scene, but essentially controlling an entire city. At the height of the panic, once again, BTK mysteriously disappeared. And it was to be another year before he was heard from again. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that part's that wrong. That just kind of goes in support with, uh, I think that just kind of goes in support with the whole, he was finding I, authority and gratification elsewhere. Uh, wait, say that again? I think that just kind of goes in support of the fact that he found gratification and authority elsewhere. Oh, He had, yeah. like, his own sense of control. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I agree. That's why he I was agree. able to take. It wasn't like clear cut, like decade long breaks or anything like the, not like the Grim Sleeper, but yeah, yeah, that it was more dependent on his own Neanderthal needs, as I called them. Mm hmm. That I agree with, but yeah, that's I just think... what I call them. If it's the narcissist, I refer to it as the uh, Neanderthal needs. No, I understand, I understand completely. It makes sense. It sounds better too. It does, it does. It, it kind of, it has like a flow to it and, and alliteration. Neanderthal needs. It's a good way to put it. I like that. Neanderthal oh. needs for the narcissist. Yeah. Heather, How Heather. can I serve me? Right. How can I get someone else to make me feel good about me? Yeah, I like it. Right. Heather says, me either, Dago, gots to be a mommy. Me either what, Heather? can't imagine how awful that last one was with the children in the bathroom. I'm assuming that Heather seems like she's a fantastic, outstanding lady. And if she's a mama too. Oh, she's a great mother. She really yeah. is. Um, she's, she's, she'd kick BTK's ass. I'm not saying anything against the victim. She's probably yeah. so paralyzed with fear. Gotcha. But Heather, Heather would have whooped that. She'd have whooped this monkey ass. Uh, it, yeah. To say, the, to say the least, what I know of her, the way she is with her kids, he would have she'd have been in the paper not him so yeah it wouldn't have happened <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have happened she, she's a tough little cookie i promise you and she's she loves her kids i love so. it absolutely i can tell she's awesome so she is she's a great great person and a great mom absolutely a great mom caveman cry baby <laughs> that's it david that's right, it david right. uh i've been handed this to show you Oh, okay. good luck with that one, JJ. Damn. Is there anything else in there except for that in, in the ice? Nope. That's ice. That's all. And peach wood, peach wood smoke. And some really old, I don't even want to know how it's in the brandy. Or scotch. Uh, scotch. Yeah, that's nice. Awesome. Absolutely, Miss Heather. You know we love you, dear. Bye. It's way smoother than it would have been, but yeah, uh, the, smoke, the pine salt taste and the, yeah. <laughs> those smokers are really cool. They do smooth it out a lot and they have a great flavor to them when you when you add them into that. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Every Christmas, um, the dogs get him a present that has to do with drinking because they drive him to drink. Yeah, so uh, gotcha. A really cool like bar cart like luxury item and this year that's what it was good gift mama good gift i used to get that my wife used to when i drank i had all sorts of things that went to because we had a bar and it it was everything guys i had uh, uh mixers and blenders and all sorts of fun stuff she used to get me and if she has it all now because she she still drinks but i don't you know so all right, folks. Moving on. Uh, damn right, put there on the old chesty. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, I got enough of that, but I agree with you, bro. It does. That shit's strong. <laughs> the Anna Williams case is one of those cases that, to me, is one of the most terrifying. Uh, for what didn't happen. Annie Williams was a 63-year-old lady, widow lady, who lived alone. 
And her pattern was on this particular night of the week, she had a, a regular thing. I can't remember if it was a dancing thing that she went to or bowling or something. And she normally came home uh, when that was over. On that particular night, she chose to stay with her daughter. When she got home early the next morning, discovered that there had been someone who had broken into her house, had spent apparently considerable time in her house. The telephone line had been cut. It was forced entry uh, through one of the windows. Uh, it was uh, just a typical residence burglary, as far as anybody knew, until several months later when a letter was received that had some items in the envelope of hers, as well as a letter and a drawing. I won't describe it. That's drawing, like Golden State Killer today. The drawing that he sent was quite horrifying. Obviously, he, it goes along with his theme of buying, torture, and kill. And he sent the drawing, uh, the poem, uh, and one of the woman's scarves uh, that she was able to identify as her scarf. BTK's poem posed a question. I got a Ella Williams would have been victim number eight. To me, that's very Can you imagine how disappointing you'd be if you got a poem in the mail and it was a BTK and it sucked? Because all of them could imagine that happening to them. And what would they do? It's very scary. And his reaction was to the point that she was so upset that she left the state. She was afraid uh, that he would come back or keep trying, so uh, she did leave the state. Poor little old BTK's attempted murder of Anna Williams confused the police even more as they desperately searched for a link between the victims. So you have a victim pattern here of the youngest, uh, Otero, who was probably about five or six, and the little girl who was probably 11 or 12. Uh, then you have uh, the parents. You have Kathy, who's a college age. You have Shirley, they're, you know, 20s, early 30s. Uh, you have Nancy Fox. And then you have a 63-year-old. Uh, again, you know, you're getting all this advice from these psychologists and these behavioral scientists, and it doesn't fit anything that they're telling us. Uh, so uh, the only thing that was consistent about this person for over 30 years is inconsistencies. Desperate for a break in the case, the police took the unprecedented step of releasing the Nancy Fox phone call to the public, which they had spent the past two years trying to enhance. Using state-of-the-art equipment at the time, experts managed to clear up some of the background noise in the aim that someone would recognize the voice of BTK. That was the first time that anybody had heard his voice. And so that was really a momentous occasion for the audience. It was really a moment. That's BTK's voice. That's the killer. When I heard the phone call there, well, it was a shock. I guess you might say. Uh, uh, the killer would be that so hard to call and notify and tell the police of his own what had happened and everything in his own Arrogance. Way. Despite releasing the voice, no one came forward. And once again, BTK mysteriously vanished. Three years after the Anna Williams incident, police still had no clues to BT. Did you want to say something? I I was conferring with my better half. Do um, you want to put it out there? Me? You don't? Okay. This, okay, let me just, this guy's the charmer of every place we go, and I'm the quiet one. I don't think anybody in this chat believes that, but I am the quiet one everywhere we go. Okay. This is unusual for me. This guy's the charmer and the chatter, and he doesn't want to be on camera. So I'll I I can put it out there. Um, his idea, and it kind of goes in conjunction with mine, is he, okay. So he didn't have a set type. He didn't. He wasn't like Ted Bundy in that way, to where there's a very specific type. It's kind of all across the board, all across the map. So what we were thinking over here, the Dober fam, is what <laughs> if it was, what if his type was the female he found most oppressive or most challenging to his authority or the one that was throwing the biggest wrench in his plan at the time so whether that's his wife which most of them seem to be his wife's age right. along the like checking back in with how old his wife would be in yeah. comparison to the victims most of them are his wife's age right but also then the, you have this motherly type thrown into it and See, you know, I, at I, one point, I, I always enough, it's his daughter. I always thought that it may have had something to do with his mother, as far as the female side of things went. Um, because a lot of times there are mommy well, one thing, guys. Well, the one thing they haven't covered in this is, um, hey, boy child room. 
earplugs, something. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Came into that one. Came into that okay. one. Okay. What now? I, he doesn't need to see everything. I'm going to be my mom or I'm going to be his mom. Okay. So the thing that they don't mention in this is his first like um, arousal experience was when his mother had dropped her wedding ring down the couch and she was struggling to get it and her hand, wrist, whatever, got cut by the spring and she was afraid to move her hand and she was screaming out to him for help. Help me get my hand loose. Go find somebody to help me. And instead, he just stood there and watched her struggle and bleed and kind of like played pocket pool, if everybody knows what I'm saying here. Yeah, he got off on Watching it. her, yes. So, it's Welcome, very Lena. much a female authoritarian type issue. I'm not going to even go as far as to say mother, because it <laughs> seems like most of his victims were actually his wife's age. So, it seems like it's the female authoritarian that's challenging him. That's kind of like what we were over here spitballing. I think I think he had a... It's obvious that he, he got an arousal per se from watching women suffer. Okay. Um, and be in pain. That's the psychological aspect on it. And I, I get that. I I see it, you know, and that, that there's multiple serial killers that have had that same scenario. Um, (laughs) but right. And if that's what you're into and you've got consent from your partner, go for it. Like fly your king flag high. But if you don't have consent, stay the fuck in your own yard. Sorry. Yeah, right. No, I get you. Say the heck in your own yard. You are not a big dog who gets to roam the neighborhood. Right, right. I get it. I absolutely get it. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. It happens. We're human, guys. We are human. I'll send you a bill for a quarter to throw into the quarter jar. Gotcha. (laughs) (laughs) I gotcha. Don't worry about it, dear. You're fine. We are human beings, guys. (laughs) Uh, especially when it comes to something that we're passionate about. What's that? They just said it might be five dollars by the time you're done with me. Hey, whatever. That's what I used to do. <laughs> Anybody that had a swear jar, I just drop a ten dollar bill and go to town. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> <laughs> don't don't, don't, like don't cool. forget how it works, guys. <laughs> don't forget. Um, we'll go yeah. on a tirade, and then we'll look at my son, and we'll go. Don't say that. <laughs> Any of it. Yeah. I mean, as I've gotten older, I, I don't swear anywhere like I used to. But I grew up in a house. I mean, it, these were words that are words. My mother, being as sweet as she is, still to this day, 70 years old, every now and then, when the mood fits her, when she's mad about something, that F word has a big capital letter on it. I promise you that much. <clears throat> Our rule is when uh, you start paying bills, then you can cast because that's a great reason to cast. Um, I guess I've never, like, I don't, I just always thought it was a disrespectful thing for kids. You know, my son does it every now and then, Caden, the older ones do it. I could never do it in front of my mother till I was like 30, 35 years old. Um, and it, that was even for the, uh, the small words, I'll just put it in, you know, I, I just get weird about that. It's just a respect. Yeah. Thing. No. You know, has been. Boy child, his jaw still falls open and his eyes go real big if he lets one slide in front of me. And I'm just like. Well, Caden will do it. Caden will do it when he's playing a video game or he's up with his friends doing his yeah. games. And I'll, I'll be down here and I'll hear, get the hell out of the way, you stupid. Okay. I'm like, yo. Oh, sorry, dad. Uh-huh. Yeah. You forgot where you're at. You ain't around your friends. Exactly. Oh, my God. Right, Mike. Forget about it. It's a Pugazi. All right, folks, moving on. We're almost done with this itself. Uh, we can talk a little bit there because yeah, we got yeah. some time yet before we got to jump over there. But absolutely, let's get this finished out. And the, oh, yeah, forget about it. Exactly. I do that constantly. You guys, how many times you guys see me doing this in the streams and stuff? You know, hey, forget this, about this it. This one over here is doing it right now. All right, right, right. Moving in, moving on. Let's roll. Yeah. K's identity, and the FBI became fully involved. In 1982, the, the federal government started funding a program uh, through the FBI called BICAP, Violent Criminal Apprehension Project. And in 1984, 
uh, money was appropriated for the Wichita Police Department to work on catching this violent criminal who had not been apprehended, the BTK Strangler. So with the federal money and city money, they devoted eventually uh, up to eight officers to work on this case full time from the summer of 1984 until the summer of 1986. Ghostbusters was the BTK task force and uh, it was a group of individuals that I put together specifically to work on the BTK case. The number one priority was to identify the individual and short of that to make sure that we had everything that we could do from an investigative standpoint done. They used computers, profilers, DNA testing. As far as I've been able to determine, the first DNA testing done in the United States was in this investigation for the BTK Strangler. Having first focused on the phone call, attention moved to the letters received from BTK. He sent copies of his letters. He did not send originals that he had typed. Uh, apparently, the copy machines of that era printed an image a little bit bigger than what it saw, so that made it impossible to positively identify a typewriter should a suspect typewriter ever be located. With the help of Xerox Corporation in Rochester, New York, we were able to identify the brand and make of toner and the brand and even the length of the roll of the paper that one of the copies was signature on. So we were able to pin it down to one particular copy machine on campus at Wichita State University which unfortunately for us was a public access machine open to any student or employee or, or person who wandered in there. So at that time it led to some speculation that perhaps he was a student. The second copy machine was traced using the same methods to the second floor of the Wichita Public Library, which was just within a few feet of where the original letter was found in an engineering book. After two years of intensive investigation and thousands of man hours, the Ghostbusters task force came up with nothing and shut down. Just about a month after the investigation had concluded. Uh, there was one last murder investigation that the Ghostbusters met to discuss. It was the murder of Vicki Wagerly. And they unanimously concluded that BTK did not kill Vicki Wagerly. It would take about 18 years before they found that they were wrong. Wichita's most notorious serial killer has not been heard from in over 25 years. But in 2004, all that changed. On March the 19th, a letter was sent to the Wichita Eagle newspaper. No one could ever imagine what the letter confirmed. The letter contained a single sheet of paper. On that sheet of paper were three photographs and one driver's license. The photographs appeared to be a woman who, with her hands tied behind her back, who appeared to be dead lying on the floor. The driver's license belonged to Vicki Wegerly. I immediately recognized that name. Vicki Wegerly was murdered in her home in 1986. The case has been unsolved for nearly 20 years. I suspected that what I had was a letter from the killer of Vicki Wegerly. That was interesting. The Vicki Wegerly case, the murderer came in the back door. It was on a very busy street. Uh, she was home. She was a, a mother. Uh, they had a child who was at uh, school. Her husband was at work, and he had a little toddler, like two years old, on the floor. He came in. He got control of her. He bound her, tied her up, left scene at the scene, strangled her, took the car, drove it a short distance away, and left. The investigators on that particular case Welcome went back, to the Molly. scene. And at the time they got to the scene, the husband had already been there. The husband found her. He disrupted the scene. He cut her loose. He thought she was still alive. The ambulance was called for her. Of course, she was dead. But he, the husband, was doing what he thought was right, and he did. By the time police got to Vicki Wegerly's house on West 13th, her heart had already stopped beating. She died within 15 minutes at Riverside Hospital. Her husband, Bill, supposedly found Vicki with a noose around her neck. Her two-year-old son, Brandon, was playing in another bedroom at the time of the murder. As BTK had been silent for seven years, wow. Vicki Wegerly's husband became the number one suspect. In a case like that, your first suspect is more of the husband. The lead detective, he believed that that was, the probability was that it could have been the husband, and he looked that direction. Given that my brother was a suspect, I was asked by the attorneys to talk to the children. Um, in a conversation when I was talking to Brandon, he said, mommy hurt man. And I asked him at that time, did daddy hurt mommy? And he said, no. So I believe in self-defense that Vicki did try to hurt her killer. Good. 
After a thorough investigation, Bill Weatherly was cleared, but for the last 18 years, a shadow has hung right. over the Weatherly family. Vicky's killer has remained a mystery. Her body was removed before detectives arrived, so there were never any crime scene photographs taken. The only item missing was the victim's driving license. This proved that the letter received in 2004 could have only come from Vicky Weatherly's killer. The false return address on the letter was from a Bill Thomas Kilman, initials BTK. Further examination revealed an authentic signature used in every communication sent by the BTK killer. When I first heard the news that BTK had returned and claimed that he had killed Vicky, I was elated. And of course, then I immensely felt guilty because that didn't seem to be the right emotion. But yet, in my heart, I knew that that meant my brother was vindicated that, hey, you know, this just puts it on the front page and for the world to know. I thought I'd been writing a history book and that I was coming near I'm the sorry, end. I'm sorry, is he near? Is that like uh, really screwed up? New chapter to be written. No serial kill. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is it just me? Is it just me, or is that really screwed up that she would say that? Like, I was elated when I found out BTK killed my sister-in-law because that and my brother didn't do it. Like, I mean, I get what she's saying. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I yeah, okay, that's fine. I understand a relieved feeling, but elated, bit much. Check yourself. What do you uh? What do you take from the like a woman still dead? Yeah, what do you what do you take from the fact that he put a return address on that? Um I'm just kind of up in the stakes on the game. Like I really feel like he looks at unaliving people as a high stakes poker game. Well that see. makes him feel important and gives him a sense of control. I think it was uh, the cat and mouse game. Personally, I was like, I, I dare you to come find me. That's kind of how what I took out of that. You know what I mean? Right. Same thing. He's still the cat. Yeah, well, of course. I get it. I see what you're saying, right? Yeah. By the way, if you didn't hear me, welcome back, Molly Cat. Thanks for coming back. <clears throat> Moving on. I think this is actually almost done. All right. Killer has ever come back yeah. after a couple of decades of being silent and terrorized the community once again. That to me is the most shocking. What brought him back? One possibility is that he wants to have attention again as he's getting his kick sitting in his house playing this this new. I personally would like to know for sure 100% what his trigger was that did bring him back after 25 years because something, something like very, very specific had to trigger that. That's a long time to be on leave, guys. Um, considering what he did, if he would not have came back after that hiatus, I, I bet you he'd have never been caught. I really bet you. I, I, I truly believe that. <clears throat> or it could have been like Golden State. That was a that one's a whole other scenario. Um, this channel is for everyone. Support this guy. Subscribe. That's thank you, David. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, that's true too. And thank you, Miss Heather. Anybody that would like to support uh, me or the channel uh, via Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo, there's the links, folks. And I do appreciate you so very much. Uh, that we are, Mr. Dover Dead. That, that we are. Let's move along. Little sick game of this. get a conviction is by having a DNA match. If they don't have a DNA match, this case may never be solved. BTK could be our neighbor. One expert even said that you could be married to BTK and not know who he is. Shortly afternoon, yesterday afternoon, agents from the KBI, agents from the FBI, and members of the Wichita Police Department arrested Dennis Rader, 59 and a white male in Park City, Kansas, for the murders. The bottom line, BTK is arrested. <laughs> Oh, 
and that's it, guys. That like that six years ago grows to its rapturously. Yeah, the relief they must have felt. Yeah, that you guys is Dennis Rader, the BTK killer again. And that is the truth that the movie The Clove Hitch Killer is based on. And for anybody that doesn't understand what the Clove Hitch thing is all about, if you haven't seen the movie, um, it's about a knot that he it's used to knot. tie for specific It's a Clove Hitch knot. So that's where that came from. So, uh, does anybody have any questions, comments, theories, uh, opinions? I mean, we, we know who he is and what happened, but... Any, anything, folks, that you want to throw out, add to, bring out, whatever? Well, who do you think it was, Dago? Well, I mean, I think it was Dennis Rader. Me too! <laughs> well, at least, see, we, we agree. I think we solved it, guys. Uh, yeah, we I are think definitely... we did, but we'll have to wait for the DNA that's already came back. Right, right. Uh, we are polling for the next... For sure. Um, yeah, we are going to publicly buzzed here. Uh, 10, 10, 30, he runs. So we will be there for that. Well, I will be. Everybody else, if you choose to, please, please show some love. Go over there and... Um, what is that? Tony. Wow. I've been waiting on dinner, man. But you guys are spoiled, man. You got the good stuff constantly. I, you know how long it's been since I've had Chinese food? And it's my favorite food. My favorite food. It's been like a year. Too expensive. Too expensive. Well, I would say you should marry my husband and let him wine and dine you. But you can't. I could. If he, he'd be so good to choose that. And, you know, it is what it is. Heather, drop the link in chat. I'm not going to get into that. But I got it on <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, <laughs> we are gonna do the poll. So, let me see. We had talked about if you could remind me, Miss Heather. There's the link right there. Thank you, Heather. David, David there it is. Isn't it? Uh, we had talked about and... what was the recommendation you had popped out with Heather the other day. Oh, it was a good one. It was uh, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, ah, the, right. the right. The right. Yes, it is the right. Bossy. See, this is why you have an autistic co-host. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Backwards thinking, but always thinking. I said, this is why you have the autistic co-host. Backwards thinking, but always thinking. And runs on movies and music as fuel. I guess. Uh, the Right, you guys, is a movie I think I showed you guys the uh, trailer for it the other day. Anthony Hopkins. That's uh, where he's a priest and uh, becomes possessed. And it's it's a great movie. And that is based on true events, folks. Uh, and it's going to be between that and the, re the first, uh, the actual Exorcist, the first one. Um, so we're going to vote on that and then the next one. And it's She All Be Coming. Put your votes in, folks. Put your votes in. I am not. I feel like it should be more of like a who, uh, who could it be now? Uh, oh, wait. Who yeah. are you? That's the who. It is. It is the who. I don't know 80s music. I don't know. I like that song. I know 80s rock, but not like pop and crap like that. Um, did anybody have any questions in regards to the story, the case itself, the movie, anything? Yeah, because I know the ending was way different than the way that BTK was caught, but I kind of like mm -hmm. that it was different because I think it gave a different perspective mm -hmm. that you wouldn't think about as an afterthought most times. That's all I can say. I can agree. I can't agree. Because <laughs> I just realized it's not a book club. Not everybody's seen it yet. But so I don't want to spoil it. All right. No, I understand. I do understand. 
we are all that way. There goes Bossy. It's the Italian. We are all that way. Forget about it. Let me see. 24 likes. Oh, that's pretty good. I only got 14 people in here. This is really sad tonight. I am hey. really disappointed yeah, that no wanted this story. I'm glad that you guys are here. I am super grateful for that. But dang, nobody else wanted to know it. Oh, well. You know, we might get a ton of rewatches. Yeah, but, and, and again, folks, please leave me some DNA on the like button. First off. Second off, uh, please uh, leave some comments in the comment section. And last but not least, and mostly important now, I don't know why, don't ask me, please share this. Um, I don't know why YouTube has gotten so super particular about what they want from me, but those are the rules. That's what they want. Share, like, subscribe. Share, like, subscribe, comment. Share, like, subscribe, comment. Share again, blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm hoping that's what it is, David. I'm hoping that's what it is. Most, you know, people do do that on Friday nights. The weather's starting to get nicer in some spots and worse in others, so who knows. Thank you, Ms. Heather. Yeah, you pick the crappiest night of the week to go live. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens because buzzed is next, and it's a Friday night for them, but they're buzzed, and they're going to be getting buzzed, and that's what everybody else wants to be doing, too, I guess, so. You know, except for my boring self. I mean, hey. Hold you got on. A tattoo. That's cool. I got you, bud. Let me see your tattoo. Don't what is that? I got you. What? Huh? It's, a, it's the oyster oh, from okay. Alice in Wonderland yeah. and then a pic of the pompous. Oh, that's cool. Good stuff. It looks good. And then I've got a pic of the pompadour. Thank you. Gotcha. It's Friday night. What are we doing now? I mean, I was trying to take after drunk turkey. Oh, they're gotcha. cool. Everybody likes them on a Friday night. Absolutely. I'm assimilating, man. I'm autistic. That's what I do. Yep, yep, yep. Guy, I love Dan. Daniel from Drunk Turkey and <laughs> Show, folks. They they got a great show too. If you guys haven't seen it, subscribe to it. Please check them out. I don't they got know a great show it. for real. Um. Uh, they're along the lines of us, uh, right along the lines with uh, Publicly Buzz. I think we got a nice little corner of YouTube cornered here with our shows, guys, every one of us. So subscribe and show some love. That's the algorithm for everybody. Everybody, yeah. Absolutely. We're all kind of floating with the same algorithm. So show some love and subscribe, everybody. Let's check this poll because there ain't that many folks in here, so it won't take that long. So yeah. one thing that's a really boring like theories on like the algorithm and stuff and how it works and how to manipulate it like in your favor. And definitely there's a reason like why everything's been spiking with the yeah. connections between us publicly buzzed and drunk turkey. It's mm -hmm. because we all fill the same niche void of the algorithm. So well. And we have more else. we have a similar collective audience so it promotes it more to each other's fans so it just right groups and groups right and the fact that we're all interflowing like we have been with these all all these shows and going back and forth like we are it's it's working out big time right oh wow. it basically describes it as imagine like a bullseye like a dartboard but yeah. instead of like the 20 points around it you've got like a hundred and then it's how close to your niche it is, and then like a hundred general types of niche. Da, da, right. Da. No, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. All right, guys, we got sixty-nine percent yes on the right and a thirty percent no. So there's that one. Sixty-nine, the lucky number. <laughs> and then the next movie. No comment. I'm really glad my husband was just now. Don't comment on that. What? Shut up. Love you. Oh, I said lucky number 69, JJ. Lucky number 69, brother. Wow, I sure didn't spell that right. I didn't say it. We are not 17 in the backseat working on things before my dad gets home. Never mind. Okay. What? The aging. Hell, are you kidding me? Did I forget how to spell all of a sudden? 
How many Catholic schools did you go to, Joe? Just one. Just one. Same. X, sir. I was the leader of my celibacy club for two years, believe it or I'm not. But I do have the t-shirts and the yearbook photos to prove it. Yeah. And then I met this guy. Oh my God, you guys. What? How the hell do you spell exorcist? E E E X C. E -X no, E X O. E X O R. Oh, that's what I did. That's when I left the O out. That's right. E I S T. That's what I did. I left that O out. Again, this is why you have a co host that is differently. I'm tired. I am tired. I am a human dictionary man. A I do have mind. said, and I can spell anything you get. What did you say? You're a human what? Human dictionary. Oh, there we go. Okay. I didn't hear you clearly the first time. Thank you, David. I had it. I just left the O out for some reason. I don't know why I did it. I put the O in the wrong place. And sleepy, tired tonight. So that poll is up, folks. The exorcist. Wake up. Or the... Do what? I said, well, wake up. We got a show to do after this one, too. Somebody got a bit of a buzz. Look at her eyes, folks. She is buzzing. Buzzing. Mine? Yes, yours. You are. Yet. You got a buzz. Don't it's lie. just really bright with the light. No, watch here. That's really bright. So it's like, if I'm looking at the camera, it's like, it's right in the light. Now watch. Now, well, you can't see it now. Well, because it's freaking bright right now, like. And you got a light on behind you and a dead animal. Watch, that'll be the thumbnail for this video is me going. Oh, that would be hilarious. I might do that, too. Oh. Huh? Miss Melissa. Melissa, thank you so much for being here. I wouldn't do that to you, by the way, Nick. Don't worry about it. Thanks for joining us, Prima really Lisa. I very much there. appreciate you. <laughs> Mike, Mike, you thought that was funny, a little bro. bit better. Yeah, I wouldn't do that to her. I'm not that evil. Oh, wait, what did you say? Let me see. It would be pretty funny, though. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with a good it's buzz. a little bit better, but it's still, like, a huge contrast there. There you go. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a good buzz bow or bow, bro. Sorry, I just don't, I just don't drink no more. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm going there. I will arrive there quite shortly, but not quite there yet. I'm curious. Still working on the same I'm one. For... Curious to see the difference in you when you get one to see how it, where it goes. Oh well, that'll be a different show then, because I don't think we have enough time for me to. And I mean, unless you will be to like turn off the camera and make another one and just. No, I'm good. I'm good. I just wanted to see if it affected you. Like, like you know, do you get super happy and goopy? Do you get mean and nasty? You know. Your first nigga. Your first... Ex excuse me? I'm Russian. I drank. I know you're Russian, but I, I don't understand Russian, so. It is what it is. That's basically, uh, like, I'm Russian. Uh, so I'm, I drink. You, it is you what turn it is. In, do you turn into a stutter baba? If you're a Russian, you should be able to get that. No. Stutababa. I. An old woman, grandma. Just. Stut Baba Yaga. Or Baba Yaga. Stutababa is a, a, like a grandma, an old lady. No, that's Babushka. The, what, that's Russian. I was talking Slovak. <laughs> That's the other half. Oh, of my... Well, I'm not Slovakian. But they're they're close. That's why I was seeing if you if you would recognize it because they're kind of in the same language realm. Do you know what Dobra Notz is? Look, I grew up in the sticks in the south. I didn't grow up in Russia. My grandma came here during World War II. But if you're Russian, when you start drinking, it should just flow out of you. You should turn into like Bridget Nielsen and Rocky and you know, <laughs> all that fun. I should have grown up in the old country if I start drinking. That's, I mean, it is what it is. You got to drink vodka, though, so, you know. Oh, my God. That's not the way that works, Dago. It, it could. You never know. 
that's why he quit drinking. So he stopped stuffing his face with tiramisu and lasagna because apparently we all revert back to our old country. No, right? no, no. I was just, I'm <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I know it really don't work that way. Oh my god! Uh, no, no. Right. Seriously, I needed that. That was good. That was all good. All right. <laughs> so it looks, looks like I'm going to be going back. Say huh? Yeah, just. 66% yes for the exorcist and 33% no. So, Miss Heather, you got your way. We are doing the right. Cannoli. Cannot forget about it. Don't be talking about. Don't be talking about cannolis. No way. Oh, my no God. Way. Now I want one. Oh, my God. We have the best Italian place. Oh, now I want one. No, no, no. What? Dang, now I just look like I'm buzzed. You got fortune cookie instead. <laughs> well then, I think she meant that. Oh. Day. He said something out of line. Out of line. Yes, and it was more offensive than hello, gorgeous wife. That's not really offensive. I'm not gonna say it. I mean, Where if he said you? it, if he said it to me, it would be offensive. But to say something like that to you, I don't. Whatever. Okay. Well, we'll and see, that's that's how I took it yesterday. Was he was telling you, "Hello, gorgeous wife." Oh well, I appreciate that, drift, sir. Or not drift. It was uh, who was it today? Was telling me. I think it was Lynn was saying you were a gorgeous man sure. he didn't even need to meet you i'm not sure about that might have been somebody else but uh that happened and i was like you know what sir you oh no that was that was that was me remember not today in fact well somebody said something about it and you said wait i was talking about jj and i said yeah i know and you were like oh was that today or yesterday see I don't remember either. I thought yes, I'm always talking about how hot he is. Don't you need to water your gas? No, he waters it. He's self-watering. Oh. The duck has been fed. I always take care of my dog. I just want to buy him a little baby pond. Like, I know you do. I just want to buy him a little baby pond, though. I noticed. I noticed too. The poor guy, for whatever reason, I don't. I'd like to figure this out. I looked it up, and it, I haven't found it. That his seizures happen more in the evening now than they used to and it, they don't really have him during the day he's kind of peppy and ready to go and then at night time he'll do that whole hack hack thing and then all of a sudden not every time but typically he'll do that and then he has a seizure it's weird i don't know if it's because he's cutting off like mm. the circulation to his brain when he hacks like that or you know it's it's just i've looked so much shit up on it and i can't find exactly one thing to pinpoint it well, it seems like he does it more during the day while we're doing the daytime show than he's done. Oh, no, no. Excuse me. He he's does done it all tonight, day, but um, all, all day and all night. And like I said, though, the seizures happen at nighttime more than they do the daytime now. It's my voice. Wow, you're on a roll tonight. David loves messing with me. <laughs> What's that thing? Um. So back to Oscar, though. The most beautiful ducky dog in the world. Um, what if it's like tied to like some type of like sleep apnea or something like that? Like, what if he's dozing off and then that triggers it? No, because he does it. He'll be standing up, walking around, and he'll start doing it. So he's wide awake then. Okay. Uh, that makes me think it's maybe like a hormonal thing because don't you like wake up with like your highest dose of hormones for the day? So I... and that's why they have you like do the fast and then do all your chest like first thing in the morning i mean yeah but i don't with, know man with him i think it's a heart thing that the one vet said that it had he thinks he believed it had something to do with his heart um but it's just weird that that would cause him to go into seizures when he does it and i think it is at this point that it's cutting circulation off to his brain which in turn causes you know the seizure oh. Thank you. Thank you again, Miss Heather. I'm not even going to say it. You guys already know. I don't like I'm not going to say it. 
Make it not you guys worse. know what it means. What are you drinking that has all of them lemons in it? Um, I'm about to finish my glass of a shot of gin, a can of Sprite, and lemon wedges. Pine saw, Sprite, and lemon wedges. Okay. That's what gin tastes like to me. I'm sorry. I can't. St I drank it one for a while. I just, I can't do it. Like what, what brand do you drink? Do I? What, what brand of gin do you drink? That's rude. Uh, what is that in there? Bombay or what? The Sapphire or whatever the hell. I think it's Sapphire Bombay. Sapphire Bombay. Yeah, I can never. I used to drink it, and it just for some reason it started tasting like pine salt to me. I had to quit drinking it. I drink it a has lot. a very herbal taste. Um, well, I guess it, it probably depends on the brand you're drinking too. I think that sapphire isn't too bad. Yeah. His scotch isn't too bad. That's what yeah. I said too. One of those things that I think both of those are like one of those like you got to work up. It's an acquired what, taste. What uh, what brand is JJ drinking? Yeah. He's got Johnny Walker, whatever the. What color? Black, whatever red, the good one is. green, blue. They're all uh, good. They're all good. <laughs> I think this one's red. It's red, red or blue. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're all. The best one I've ever had yeah. is black. But uh, there's a. Um, well, I, I don't think I told you guys this story once before. Maybe not all of you, but I used to be. I live next door. A friend of mine. Her son played for the, uh, he played professional football um, and he played for the New York Giants and the 49ers. Um, and um, he, they won the Super Bowl, the Giants did the one year. And he got a Super Bowl ring and they gave the family, all the players got a, a bottle of the very best top of the line. It's like a collectible, two bottles. One was to drink and one was to keep as a collector's bottle because it had the Super Bowl insignia on it and so on and so forth. But it was Johnny Walker. Um, trying to remember. I think black is the, or blue is the best. That's right. Thank you, bro. Um, but this one was a, yeah, a great, so. they said this was a great above the blue. So, <clears throat> um, and I drank, we drank a bottle of it. Uh, me, his mother, him and his brother. We were taking shots of it one night. And I'm telling you what, I have never had anything that smooth in my life. It was good. The The bottle itself was stupid expensive, I guess. It's worth a lot of money, but it's good. The one that, we didn't open the one that had the Super Bowl thing on it, of course, but they opened the other one they gave you to drink. It was awesome. Very, very cool. Right. That would have been sacrilege. And then I put his, he let me wear his Super Bowl ring. It took two fingers to put it on. It was that big. What? Kind of a fun night, just to say the least. <laughs> Johnny Walker Blue. I've only ever had one NFL offer, and uh, I rapidly, harshly turned that down. To play you don't football? Get the price on that. It wasn't from Tom Brady. It was just. See Tom Brady in his box. In his box? He said what you said. In the family of the player's box. Yes. And Tom Brady anyway. Tom Brady's dead now. What? He's not on my team anymore. Yeah, he's dead now. He's not on my team anymore. Uh, apparently he passed away. And me and Phil Belichick are just doing the best we can to keep on keeping on. Like, you don't mean in real life, right? No, he's not actually dead. Yeah, he's I was going to say, I hope you didn't think he actually he died. died. He didn't, but I'm just saying. What's up, Strike? Um, I'm not that hip. Uh, that, I don't know, Heather, or April. They said that, that it was something heart-related, I think. I'm not sure. I've never liked Tom Brady, so no worries. Not you. I was talking to Jago. Stop talking bad about Oscar. I don't want to hear that bad news. Makes me a sad panda. Love his little quacking dog. 
clackers for your dog. I'm gonna keep going. You left me unsupervised. What do you expect to happen here? You're quacking me up, man. Wow. I already used that one. Where'd Booney go? Wait a duck out of the conversation. Everybody just go. left. They came in, said hi, and they left. Oh, my jokes just ruined it. My jokes just ruined it. Bread at the pond. Wow, David. <laughs> Joe Rogan's wife. <clears throat> so, nobody's got any questions, comments, theories. I am going to excuse myself for a moment. So, the floor is all yours, uh, Nikki. I'll be right back. Oh, good Lord. This is how we go to hell in a handbasket, ladies and gentlemen. Free for all. I got my chat up. David, I love Oscar too. That's why I don't like hearing bad news about him. Mama Bear, love you too, Mrs. Meatball. Well, Mrs. Sister Meatball. Did you turn the mic off or not? I don't want to hear that. Never mind. Maybe I should take that out. Wash your hands, Dago. I'm going to ask him when he gets back. Did you wash? Don't touch that keyboard shit. until you wash your hands. Dago's take the fat shit. <laughs> I heard a fart from here. I don't want to know about that. He just farted. Just stop it. He's I don't... farting everywhere. Would you stop it? I don't want to know. Dago, stop farting. Get your own microphone. A little farter. Oh, my God. I'm show. Oh, that's beautiful, April. I did that earlier. We did that for lunch. That's why I had to cut the uh, morning show a little bit short. Not really short, but just not full length. Which is funny while Dago just cut the cheese. Would you stop it? Jesus. David said, you're a monster. Thank you so much, Heather. You're such a sweetheart. And just cute as a button, too. What kind of cardboard box did he catch you under? What did he use as bait? I want to know. I could do an episode on it. <laughs> All the cute girls, I want to know. What did he do? What kind of box did he catch you under? And what did he use as bait to catch you and turn you into a mod? Molly, I'm assuming it's catnip. Everybody else, I need to know. I need the answers. I cringe when guests or my employees come out of the bathroom and don't wash their hands. Oh my God. Fired. Like, I wish that was a job. If it was a job to fire people, this chick. Oh my God. I'm the best at firing people. And just tap into my robot instincts and I'm like, you're inadequate, inefficient, frequently late. Goodbye. <laughs> Catnip and cheese. Love you, Molly. It's pizza. It's a weakness. Oh, Heather. I feel you, baby. I probably would have fell for it too. Mama Bear, what was your bait? What kind of box did he catch you under? Mike. You need to stop. Like, this is every woman's, like, nightmare thought. Like, no, no, no. That's why women don't usually shake hands. So we're just like, yeah. Or, oh, I know. I'm good. Super we know what you've been doing with those dirty nets. We don't like it. There goes growing it. Yeah. David. Do I need to send you to the super nanny corner? Come on, man. Strikey caught you a cheesecake. Fair enough. Did you wash your hands, Dago? Um, yeah, sure. I went and got more tea and then I washed my hands. There's a, an alarming hands, concern. The <laughs> There's an alarming concern. What was that, JJ? It's like a growing movement. No, no, no. Don't give him a microphone right now. I heard him say Nothing. something. Just don't do it. We're Mama all concerned bear. about the hand sanitation. 
What are you doing, Mama Bear? Mama Bear you she's supposed to be sleeping. Oh, did it smell like great Kool Aid, Mama Bear? The fuck? Oh, sorry. Same on me. Oh, I said a bad word. See what? It's a bad influence. What it whoa, what just happened there? And now he sounds like a broken accordion. Yeah. Sorry guys, I don't didn't mean right. to say that. Now I'm gonna urinate and wash my hands. Yeah, well, this is thank you for the info. I appreciate that. Bow, chicka bow. So we're just killing some time until it's that time, which is almost you're eating cereal. Okay, thanks for telling me that. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be in bed? I thought you were going to bed. Cereal is great. Cereal is one of my favorite evening snacks. It really is, especially if you got the good stuff. I don't know. Let's see who. Uh, I'll give you guys, like, anybody ever heard of Cracklin' Oat Brand? I absolutely love it. 25 it's minutes ago. 30 minutes ago. Never mind. Dude's in the bathroom. Uh, I thought she should have been asleep already. Mama Bear? Eating cereal. What kind of cereal are you eating, Mama Bear? Mine, too. I got it because my son has 103 temperature. Oh. Damn. Oh, Mama. Don't be giving him the red stuff or the, the purple. That's bad for that if you got fever stuff going on. Honey Nut Cheerios. That's the good stuff. It's yes, I am. Crack the Nut Brand is my favorite, but I would take some Honey Nut Cheerios. Cereal sounds good. Actually, one of my other, well, those are the healthier ones, but of course, I love Crunch Berries, you know, Captain Crunch and all that fun stuff. The peanut butter Captain Crunch, it's the best cereal on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, disagree. We like the fruit yogurt. That's a good one. Fruit and yogurt, special case, good, but my yeah, favorites yeah. are Golden Grams and Waffle Crisp. Golden Grams, yes, that one wins. Absolutely, you're right. I forgot about Golden Grams. That, that, have you tried the s'mores cereal bars with the golden grams? Yeah, them are good. My wife makes those. Uh, you are a very smart man to marry her. I like taking kicks and frying it in a pan with... Oh, listen, dude. My mom, when I was younger, we were poor. Whoa. And my mother used to take Cheerios, regular Cheerios, and she would fry them in butter in a pan... Sometimes you could put cinnamon sugar on them or just fry them like that. And they were a hell of a snack for when, you know, when you're a kid with nothing. I was debating between heading that she is Cocoa Puffs or Captain Crunch Berries. Yeah. Golden Grams is the one, though. Like, I forgot about that one. That one is the best cereal they ever really did make. I like because we eat healthier, you know. I don't do that anymore, but. Uh, Special K with the strawberries in it, it's pretty good. The yogurt one, like you guys said, that's that's pretty good too. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, that's one of the bad ones, but it's good. Corn Flakes with the with the dusting of Coke. Okay, David. I mean, it's just, I mean, whatever works, bro. <laughs> what whatever works for you, brother. That's insane. Frosted Flakes or Corn Flakes with honey. That I've never had. Never had that. Frosted Flakes I've had, but not with honey. That's too sweet for me. Cinnamon, cinnamon. Toast Crunch tastes like cardboard with cinnamon on it. Nasty. Uh, I think it's pretty good. David said his favorite is Corn Flakes. David said his, his favorite is a Corn Flakes with a dusting of Coke. Powdered sugar? Heck yeah. Yeah, I don't think he meant powdered sugar, but yeah, okay. Speaking of the checks, have you guys ever had that? Uh, um, it's um, it's all the different check cereals. And I it's, segue. It's um, 
I think you mix it all with peanut butter and chocolate, and then you roll it in powdered sugar. It's some kind of a puppy chow. It's some kind of a snack. It's so good, so good. Yeah, puppy chow. It's so good. What's up, Red? I was too Red when I was a kid. Every Saturday morning, I was a serial killer. Uh, <laughs> aired it up. That was funny. yeah. Um, my mom didn't love me enough to do the fried kicks or anything like that, but I do know what it's like to grow up with like next to nada, and um, I pretty much lived on life cereal and kicks growing up. Life oh. cereal is the bomb. Did you ever taste the blueberry one they came out with? Blueberry what? The blueberry life that they had out for like it was like super limited time. Never ever in my life did I ever hear about that. I knew there was regular life and cinnamon life. That's all I knew. They have chocolate oh, now. Man. No, this wasn't like this wasn't like when we were kids. This was like just recently, like a year or so ago, I think. Oh, then no, I've never heard of it. And of course, guys. Oh my god, I drove KJ crazy looking for it. I don't forget we gotta talk about um around halloween time they always come out with booberry frankenberry all them i love those two just because of the just because of the uh the retro feeling you get from eating them you know they really don't okay taste. so confession time i've never had either one of them smurf what berry they taste like? smurf berry crunch was the shit smurf right berry. what's up pbr that was what is that? smurf berry you're probably too young how old, if I can ask, how old are you? Or at least what range are you, of age are you in? Don't be a jerk. I'm trying to be, I'm not being a jerk. I'm asking because it's rude to ask a woman how old she is. So what, what range, age range? Okay, I'll give you, I will give you, I will give you this. Um, I was married for almost four years before I had my first child. And uh, my son is my youngest child and he just turned 13. And I was married as soon as it was legal. So I will give you that. Hold on. Say that again. Math story problem time, buddy. No, you okay, just said so I was married all as soon as together. I said I was married as soon as it was legal. 18. I was married four years almost when my first child was born. 22. My son is my second born child. And he is just turned 13. What does him being your second born child have to do with anything? Because I was married four years when I had my first born child. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say because I don't feel like barfing up the taste of pennies all night from fibbing. So leave it. I was just, only reason I was trying to figure out was to put you in a group to see if you'd remember something but it's it's fine don't worry about it yeah now you got everybody thinking like what the hell kind of a the riddler just attacked with that riddle there and we're all like okay let's see 26 36 42 backwards reverse that uh, square root of nikki a. Nah, strike your poison ivy but i kill plants you kind of do look like poison ivy with that hair but i kill plants because i have a black thumb a black thumb. Okay. Uh, I can't I, take care of anything that doesn't let me know it's hungry. David said clue. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a roundabout, and that's fine. I Like I said, she wouldn't be old enough, or yeah, old enough to, to remember, so it's no big deal. Um, ever had peach I nut? don't genuinely, honest. Obviously. Born in 1984. Younger. Wow. Ow. Ow. Who said that? David. David, I thought we were friends. <laughs> you didn't see what we strike. We were like a covert united front. Strike first said 41. I was like, I ain't repeating that. <laughs> strike, we are not friends. Not even. <laughs> no. She just swallowed her face, brother. See what you did? You can't do that to a woman. You have to be polite. I'm about to turn off this mic and start cussing and rocking. Uh, I ain't even repeating what he just. You, you better run PPR for that one. That's kind of what I came out with. What I that's what I thought. Dober dead. 
right around there within a year or so. but no she's too young to remember so she is by the way guys we got two youngins now strike first and nikki are the babies of the group which is cool it's good to have some young blood in here so that we can uh keep up with the times folks are you talking like no i had it figured usually rounds down by a couple of years so I had it figured out within a, like I said, within a year or two is what I thought that was. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't get married at 12. That does happen. That didn't happen here, but. Who was it? Didn't Jerry Lee Lewis marry his 12 year old cousin? Yeah. So did Edgar Allan Poe. It doesn't make it normal. It makes it freaky shit that makes you a goth hero. Apparently, and I don't understand. No, that I'm not saying, I ain't saying it's normal. I just said it does happen, you know. 1988. It was a good year. 1988 was one of the best years I ever. 1989 was the best year of my life. Actually, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. 1993 was the best year of my life. That was the year my first child was born. And then. 2006 was the next best year of my life, and that's the year that I married my current wife, and had, we had Katie. Okay. Meatballs! Meatballs! Hello, puppy dog. How are you doing, puppy? It's good to see you, senior puppy dog. How are you doing, puppy? Little puppy, are you there, little puppy? Can you hear me? Do you want to hear me? Do you want to talk to me, puppy? Ruff, ruff, ruff. Remember, he just he a little bit over six months old, about seven months. Yeah, he understands both English and Russian, but he's not a fan right now. We'll show you a little day, Which one is that? Seven. Lucky number eleven. Lucky number eleven. My little baby grandpa's in there whimpering, like, "Mom, I was good. I was being haved." Let's see what happens. That's him. I was being good. <laughs> Which one's the uh, Bobby Egg is in here, just like she right. What's that? Stop it. Not barking, so it must not bother him too much. My dad, y'all good? Wandering looks about 25. Yeah, I was going to. I mean, if you had to guess, I would say that same thing as far as the way you look. Or maybe a little younger, actually. But I'll never forget my make. What? Doobie would always nip the neighbor in the butt on his way out. Holy earphones. Sorry about that, Mama Bear. I didn't think about anybody wearing earphones. I bet that was super high pitched and loud. My My apologies. It, it was, and they started going nuts. That's why I had to find a quick way to bury the thing. <laughs> oh, I, I figured they'd just bark at it, and then I was going to set it off, but they didn't bark, so so be it. Where is Molly? Where'd she go? Oh, she had to go pick up the... Gotcha. Dobre notes. But the fungal, I can get away with that one. Did, did that scratch Molly or oh, Heather's itch? I don't know. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> yeah. No worries, uh, Red. Uh huh. Heather got that one. <laughs> uh, 
She said nice. nice. Don't, and now I got Baba Yaga giving me grief because I'm flirting with the hot mod in front of the husband. Levin's whimpering. Grandpa's whining. See what? Oh, yeah. Levin's dying to get on your lap right now. My best friend just walked through the door. And so Levin's like, Mom, I want to be a kitty cat. Well, I'm dying for you to get on my lap, like. Oh, did everybody hear that? Yeah, everybody just said that. Did you hear your cousin's You just went broken accordion all, man. again, man. It's all good, bro. Got to schedule surgery here pretty soon to get them fixed. Damn, how'd you do that, uh, Red? Yeah, I hope the roads are safe out there, Molly. Be careful, hon. You're in uh, Winter Haven. Safe, safe. 25 likes. Make medium choices. Oh, that was a crappy stream. Oh, well, I appreciate it is, you guys. It is Friday night, man. I appreciate you guys. I may have to take the Friday night ones away and just maybe take it down to Mondays and Thursdays and do it that way. Because I don't seem to get many people on Wednesday nights yeah. either. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I just oh, don't want to. Maybe Tuesday, Thursday, that sort of thing. All right. What time is uh, what time's, uh, the Buzz Boys going live? 10 30 or 10 uh it's 10 30 i believe uh let me use the uh other phone yeah. we're supposed to be getting snow tonight they said for tomorrow and i'm hoping it ain't much because i at this point in time we've had so much nice weather that i'm like i'm done with it i don't want any more now Oh, Publicity Buzz has a drinking game, and they just posted rules for it uh, a few hours ago. Honestly, I was a little behind on that, but um, yeah, I'm not. I'll be drinking my. Uh, no, it's actually, it's right now. Is it's starting? So they're going live now. Yep. It's All right, been, folks. Well, uh, thank you guys so very much for joining me tonight, and Miss Nikki. I appreciate it. I hope you guys got something out of the story. Um, Definitely no, loved no, it. Back, the backstory on that movie. Check the movie out if you'd like. Got gotcha, you, David. Um, and I hope to see you guys. What is today? Friday. I'm maybe live tomorrow. My daughter's 29th birthday is tomorrow. So I think we're going to have a get together sometime. So I may be live in the morning. Uh, if so, you'll know. Priority. And I'll see you guys if uh, you choose to see me. So once again, folks, I appreciate I'm gonna you. I'm going to duck out fast and Fabrice the house. because Yeah, Bobby Yeager just did something gross. So I'm going to duck out and let you wrap it up. Again, Nikki, for joining me. Have a great night. Take it Thanks easy. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 And I've been blown up for a couple of years when my face reconstruction of tubes never came out. Could heal. Ah, I got you, brother. I got you, brother. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Well, again, uh, thank you all for joining me so much. Again, there, guys, if anybody should choose to donate to support the channel and or me, uh, I do very much appreciate it. Uh, I got to get some parts from my computer, so that will definitely help. There's the link for the PayPal Cash App and the Venmo, and I do appreciate you guys. You guys have a great, 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 let me stress, great rest of your night. Uh, please join us over at Publicly Buzzed. If you can, I would appreciate seeing you guys over there. Show the love. Follow us over there. And again, guys, it should be fun. Other than that, uh, don't forget to love yourselves, to love each other. Don't change nothing about yourselves. You are the beautiful people. And hopefully, folks, I will see you all soon. Have a great night, folks. Love you and goodbye.
rolling out. <laughs>